relations between these two countries are always tight affairs. Maxwell pushes out wide, nice try. Here comes Fiona Lewis, score. Conco drops it. What a fight back. It's Kaylee Powell. Wales have another. Gaffney's in. We are level. And she's nailed it. Wales win it. It's a lovely move to two and two. Still going. Oh, Chloe Raleigh. Here comes Lewis. And that's it. Surely that's the game. Good afternoon from Cardiff Arms Park, one of the great rugby grounds where Wales are looking to build on their third place in the Championship last year and Scotland are very much a team on the up. Today promises to be a cracker. And we are right in the middle of the action, warm-ups all around us and it really is the most wonderful time of the year. You might think that Andy Williams was singing about Christmas. Wrong, he was singing about the Six Nations. Three ladies who can't wait to ditch me and get involved in these warm-ups. In the Welsh side, we have Siobhan Lillycrap and Rachel Taylor and in the middle, representing Scotland, Deborah McCormack. Let's get straight into things. That's Siobhan. Recent terms, this has been a tale of two teams, uh, France and England, but isn't it great to have these two sides really taking the challenge on? Yeah, it really is, and we're seeing now the benefits of professional contracts. These both sides have had professional contracts for two years, and yeah. we see that in the way they play. I think we've got the test match of the weekend on our hands here. You know, the last seven outings in the Six Nations, it's been within uh, six of those have been within seven points, so it's, it's going to be a tight one. It will be. Uh, Rachel, you have coached Wales, you've played for Wales and um, they are battling for third again this year they got it last year it's it's great to have this how they've come on yeah absolutely and everyone in this uh, in this championship especially will be targeting that WXV1 competition it was a tough tough um, set of results for Wales in WXV1 but certainly ahead of a World Cup that's where they want to be playing they want to be challenging themselves against the best in the world but Dives when it came to WXV2 Scotland won that how much can we read into this yeah, well, also on the back of that, they've got six back-to-back -back wins. So they'll be full of confidence, full of belief going into this match. And they'll want to take that momentum forward going into Six Nations campaign. Absolutely. Well, the players are on the field. But earlier on to get here, they took a walk reminiscent of the great 80s men's team, taking in the sights and sound, meeting fans along the way. They seem pretty relaxed. But two men who are probably a bit more nervous are the coaches. And they've been speaking to Jenny Drummond. Johan, it was a successful campaign last season, third overall. Is third the minimum coming into the Six Nations? It's definitely something that we uh, are looking to target for sure, uh, building on those performances from last year. We, we built some great momentum in the tournament last year and hopefully we can do it again this year. You've got a bit of a mix of youth and experience, particularly with the wingers today. How excited are you about this squad? Oh, super excited, you know, to give young talent the opportunity. They've been performing well for their clubs or in the Celtic Challenge and what a stage to go out and express themselves. Certainly, and at Scotland are a team who have, sh have built over the last 12 months. They're full of confidence right now. How do you go about nullifying that threat? Yeah, and they are um, a big threat. They've gone really well, you know, in their last three games especially. So, you know, for us, it's about starting well and getting a foothold in the game. That's important for us, and hopefully we can build on that then. The, the squad have really built momentum. Just what are you wanting out of this Six Nations campaign? To keep that momentum going. Um, we have worked really hard on some belief, um, I think the last six games have shown that we what we're capable of. We have been building for a while, um, and the last six games have shown us what we are all about. But we're just really excited to get going in this new Guinness Six Nations. So, yeah, it's a, it's a good one to start with, and we just want to get going. You were out muscled against Wales in the last Six Nations campaign. What threats can you pose to them today? Um, I think we've had a few changes since that last one. I think we were missing, you know, two of our second rows in Wassel and Bonner, and I think those two, with the experience that you have both attacking and defensive lineouts, but also a little bit of power in the scrum with them as well. To have Molly Wright back as well on the bench gives us a real opportunity to bring to change things on the bench. And you know, you've seen the bench as well that we've got, you know, with Chloe and Shona and you know, Louise McMillan, you know, we've got some real experience on the bench as well. So the real positive thing for us is we're also building a squad and that's the you know that's a real positivity around this group. 
Well, it's not been as extreme as Wales men's, but the women's have been going through a transition period as well. And you have lost some experience. You're going to need some big match players like your Alex Callenders, your Cecilia Tupolotos, to step up today, won't you? Yeah, and they are big game players. We've seen uh, Cecilia Tupolotos perform last year against Scotland, and she was the go-to ball carrier. Uh, she's been performing for Gloucester. And then Alex Callender is uh, vice captain here today, being, being captain in Brith on Thunder. And what you see is what you get with Alex. Yeah, just to just to go over Cecilia, you've seen on the screen now, like she's a phenomenal ball carrier, um, gets meters made. I think 60% gain line for Wales last tournament, and she was key to that. It's probably about how Wales use her. I think will be the the, the challenge today. And Alex is a, an incredible player, um, vice captain today. It'll be the balance for her of what she does over the breakdown in terms of can she get turnovers, but without giving away penalties. That'll be her biggest challenge. Debra, it's not always been the case with Scotland when it comes to having strength and depth, but thankfully for them, that seems to be the case. And again, when we talk about big match players, someone who you know well would be Emma Orr, and she could be the real linchpin out there today. Yeah, she's been brilliant. She's a real uh, mainstay in this team now. And she plays with such composure. And let's not forget, she's only 20 years old still, 14 <laughs> caps. Um, but she looks for those options, she carry. She'll put people into space. But what's really exciting about her is her defence as well. She is absolutely relentless. Her tackle, her dominant tackle stats were up there amongst the top of the back rows uh, in the Six Nations last year. So I think she'll be a real challenge for the Welsh to get through that channel today. So um, yeah, she's going to be key for Scotland. A few other people to look out for when we talk about the strength and depth of the side. We've seen um, Alex Stewart come through the Celtic Challenge. She starts uncapped in the back row today. She's been brilliant for Edinburgh. Also, Eliane Clark and uh, Evie Gallagher, keep an eye out for those. Absolutely. They well, this is the second of three matches that we have coming up for you. We have England, Italy tomorrow. But first, after 40 weeks of waiting, the time has come. Joanne is going to head up to commentary now and she will be sitting alongside Scotland international Heather Lockhart and first Claire Thomas. The last time Joanne Cunningham's women were at home in the Six Nations it was before a record crowd of over 8,000. They were well beaten by England that day, but this program and its following only continue to flourish. They've developed a habit of making history with that first ever win over the USA Eagles in September before their WXV exploits. And now a third place Six Nations finish to match or even better in 2024. Scotland are also stalking down their own records with a seventh straight win, perhaps just 80 minutes away how times change. Scotland had lost their last 10 when they faced Wales in the second round of the last year's edition. We're on the crest of a wave, Brian Eason said recently, and they've cruised right on into Cardiff on it. And in the red corner, their great rivals and an outfit who will relish the niggle and the spice of this encounter. Wales have never lost to the Scots in their own backyard and they will defend this place with their lives today. new storylines and a brand shiny new championship the 2024 women's six nations is upon us with all the flames and the fury and sisters in red and sisters in blue before expectant passionate fans and ready for the first time this year to savor their national anthems
Emotions are high, the pride palpable, and the anticipation humming. We're moments away from kickoff, so let's take a look at the teams. Well, the last time these sides collided, Wales' front row put out 80 thunderous minutes. So it's no surprise that Johan Cunningham's opted for the same trio a year on. This is surely the tournament when the prodigious Clayton George makes that fly half of Jersey her own. She'll be well supported in that quest by the familiar faces around her. Now Metcalf, Karen Lake and Tanner Jones are all her teammates at Premiership table toppers at Gloucester Hartbury. Given Scotland's current form, Brian Easton was never going to tinker too much here. There are familiar thistled warriors across the pack from the prolific Lana Skeldon to their talismanic captain, Rachel Malcolm. But the real headline is at Openside, where 19-year-old Alex Stewart earns her senior international debut. Lisa Thompson and Rona Lloyd return from GB7's duty to provide, respectively, guile and gas. And Meryl Smith, who has been blockbuster for Bristol Bears this season, makes her first Test match start at fullback. The sheer quality amongst the replacements is testament to the depth these programmes are developing. None more eye-catching than Scotland's number 23, Chloe Rolly, who lit up last year's championship with her defence-decimating capabilities. Scottish scrum half Katie Massenson said in the week that motivation comes easily for this occasion. This is the game, she says, that everybody wants to win. In the middle today is Italy's Clara Munarini, back at the ground where she made her Six Nations refereeing debut in 2019. Sarah Cox and Holly Wood are on hand with the flags and Leo Colgan with all the angles in the TMO truck. All right, here we go then. This one always comes down to the slenderest of margins, but the power, the pace, the aggression, the passion, well, they're nothing short of colossal. Wales in red, playing from right to left, and Scotland all in blue, looking for a first ever win in these parts. Lady George will get us underway as the ball flies from sunlight to dappled shade and it's carried back in field by fullback Meryl Smith. And yes it! No, no. Katie Massinson. Sends that one up and over the top to pick out on debut Jenny Haskett. Plays her club rugby for Bristol Bears and used to play her international code. For England under 20s. She was their captain once upon a time, but she's been coaxed along the M4. And today, what a proud moment for her. Earns her debut. No heads! Kira Bevan, the rambunctious swashbuckling That's scrum half for Wales, whips that one away, but the line speed from Scotland stops red jerseys in their tracks. Coast to coast they go. George with the 
An accidental bounce pass picks out Jasmine Joyce, who is bundled backwards on that five meter channel. Scotland pushing the home side backwards at a rate of knots. So it feels only appropriate to bring in one of the women alongside me. 89 time Thistle, Heather Lockhart. Heather, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Great to be here. Yeah, Scotland doing superbly well from that kickoff. And just a knock on there. But yeah, getting get territory from the box kick, well taken, and then pushing, pushing Wales back. So super start there. What they won't want to see, though, is the fact that this is resulting in a Welsh scrum because Shuan Lillicrap, who's perhaps got her breath back since dashing up to join us in commentary, this is Wales's bread and butter. Yeah, absolutely. It's, a, it's an area of the game that Wales prided themselves off last Six Nations um, and, and before that as well. Scrum and line-out set-piece being dominant for, for this Welsh side. And uh, that front row in there, Gwynhia and Pierce, Cecilia Tupelotto and Kelsey Jones will be looking to, to get the upper hand of this first, first scrum and put a, a good picture in the referee's mind. So, Pers, Jones and Tua Pilotti packing down opposite Bartlett, Skeldon and Belial. Just apologies for any slightly yeah. fruity language you might have caught over Clara Munnarini's microphone there. Passions run high in this fixture. Absolutely. Both front, front rows unchanged from the fixture last year, so know each other well, and um, yeah, just going to give it everything they got, especially, as you say, setting the picture for, for the first scrum. I think set piece today will play a huge part in the game. Um, you know, it's going to be a, a battle out there, and I think whoever gets the upper hand at set piece will set their stalls out early and give them that foothold in the game. So. Both teams will probably be looking at this area of the game really hard throughout the week. How do we get the upper hand here, which will allow us to unlock other areas of the game? This time, jobs are good on and Bevan on to Butchers. Now the ball is with the skipper, Hannah Jones, with an audacious little show and go, and she makes 10 metres. Bevan through now to Butchers. The tip on pass from George is a cute one. She's got such a dazzling array of tricks up her sleeve, the fly half, and now Callender finds herself on the inside shoulder of fellow flanker Butchers and into the 22 come Wales. To a Pilotti with a trademark thunder up over the game line and there's the penalty. Yeah, great play from the Welsh side. I really like Cleeky George's attachment up there. I was hoping she'd get into the game early, but you can see her attached to the back of those pods, looking to play out the back and then hit the new short runners. And then we're seeing Natalia John come short on a, and a bit of a line break there. But Will seem to be finding their attacking flow early, which is really promising. And how they move the ball from the first phase. Cleeky out the back to Jazz, to Hannah. A little show and go, half line break, get some front football. And then you see the forwards here lining up and Alicia Butchers out the back, Cleeky George and Talia off the short line. So really nice to see Cleeky's attachments there and looking to get in the wide channel early. Kira Bevan shared the kicking duties last year with Eleanor Snowsell, who of course has hung up her boots, retired from the international game. So 67% off the tee in 2023. What has the Bristol Bear got at the start of this new campaign? <laughs> Sweetly struck, the flags go off, and Kira Bevan scores Wales' first points in 2024. They lead Scotland, and they'll be delighted with their opening few exchanges. It's, it's interesting, isn't it, Claire? You know, the penalty there showing Scotland the respect and no win what type of fixture this is going to be today what type of test match this is going to be we're going to get three points on the board early to make sure that scoreboard is taken over because it's going to be one hell of a test match Stop six. Yeah, absolutely. We know in, in recent matches, um, it have never been decided by less seven points or less, six out of eight times since 2017, and the kicks are crucial. Kira Bevan, World Cup, uh, right. yeah, deciding to kick, so yeah, absolutely crucial.
Australia. Well, it was a bear who kicked the points, and it was a bear who did the job at the line out. Scotland what? scoring 80% of their tries last year off that particular set piece, and they've really got a rumble on here. Those two phases, lightning quick. Mattinson on to Nelson, the vice captain. Here is Smith with 15 on her back for the first time in a thistle jersey, but offsets Corinne Grant. And the Scottish flyer who scored her first test match try in this very fixture last year strikes straight back for the visitors. They have carried their scintillating form all the way to Cardiff. Yeah, Corinne Grant will just be absolutely thrilled with that. I was watching in the warm-up. She is deceptively quick, and that was a superb finish out in that left wing. She really is going from strength to strength. And again, Scotland scoring off that line-out, as you mentioned there. 12 out of 15 of their tries last year were scored from line-out. That was a training ground move and just superbly finished. Just seeing their hard carries. And Helen Nelson just getting that line going. And again, it's Meryl Smith there just coming into the line and just giving that final pass that Green Grant finishes superbly. Yeah, it's a great finish by her, isn't it? She still had a lot of work to do, but her footwork on the edge to beat the defenders to take that try is, is, is phenomenal. Yeah, only her eighth cap. She was first cap in 2021. Only her eighth cap. She's had to bide her time, but really coming to the fore now. What a tester this is for Helen Nelson. She's given it a good whack. If she's managed to dial that one in, that is a peach. Scotland just full of confidence. Their recent form resplendent in everything they just put out there. Yeah, just tails up. That was absolutely crucial. We're just talking about the importance of the kick, and that is a crucial conversion by Nelson. Well played. Restart taken quickly. It's three plays seven in Cardiff. France, of course, got their campaign up and running a little bit earlier on in Le Mans against Ireland. 38 to 17 that finish. So they're sitting pretty at the top of the standings for now. The Red Roses getting their latest Grand Slam defence underway in Palmer tomorrow. Here is Hasketh on debut. Yeah. She played football internationally as well, so keep an eye on those feet. They are Maisie and Trixie, and they will keep women in blue guessing all afternoon long. All the reactions from Nelson, wicket keeper asks. She popped up and pounced that one, but there's just going to be a little bit too much on that kick. Or was that? Did Jazz kick that out then? Where's kick down? Well, Nelson got a hoof to it. And if Jasmine Joyce kicks that from the field of play, then that changes things entirely. Yeah, it looks like she kicks it out there. Kicks it out and nearly takes her own head off. <laughs> Bounced so hard off those backboards. Well, George's kick, not one that she'll enjoy watching back again on Monday morning. Scuffs that one. Scotland straight back up into the jaws of the Welsh defence. Mattinson swiftly to the rock, unearths it and finds Bonner. Both Emma Wassell and Sarah Bonner no. missing for Scotland this time around last year. And Scotland go quickly with that penalty. Smith now ball in two hands up and on to another debutant. Alex Stewart just 19 and getting her first start in Scottish colours. Eight, ten, ten, eight. Yeah, I was talking to Katie Madsen yesterday at, at training and she was saying we want to play quick. Wales lost three of their tries last year from the quick tap penalty, so she's done her homework and they're yep, you know, you. going quick there. Well played. Yeah, as well identify, wasn't it? Ran straight into Beth Lewis, got them an extra 10 metres. 
Look at the confidence in this Scotland side here. Not going for points, which is available, going going for corner. Feeling the momentum that, they, that they've got. But uh, Wills need to be careful, you know. Discipline potentially wasn't the best in last year's tam- championship. They conceded the most penalties of all teams. Um, and it could play, play a big part today unless that discipline is tidied up. Skeldon has eight tries to her name already in the Premiership this season and she's straight into the back of that throng of blue jerseys. It's crabbing a little bit sideways, but the whitewash is within reach. Martinson told to use it once. The referee's hand goes up. Cecilia Tupolotti doing all she can to disrupt. The ball hits the ground, but the ball is out. Nelson, flat pass onto Thompson. She's driven backwards in the tackle, but the ruck speed is excellent from Scotland, and they find themselves six metres shy of what would be a second score here in the opening round. Ball squirts out, stripped. And Natalia John all too happy to hoover that one up and dip a meaty shoulder into Scottish defenders. Bethan Lewis, the latest to be entrusted with the exit. Bevan barking orders. Use it. Assembling a couple of bruises on the blind side. And here goes Callender. Back it goes into the pocket. George puts mighty boots of ball and they're out of their 22. A well executed exit there. Yeah, really good stuff. That turnover uh, by Wales at crucial time. I didn't see who quite was in there, but someone was over the ball, and then that pressure in that breakdown, that ball pops out, and they get the turnover. You know, Scotland look dangerous. They're pressing. Can't quite see who that is over ball, but then ball is out of that turnover. I think it was Butchers originally, and then Shaky George re- releasing that pressure from the Welsh side. Scotland's line out at sixes and sevens but the white scrum cap of Skeldon was the first over the top of the ball one angle that's a third penalty against the hosts and they'll have to be careful no sides conceded more over the last championship yeah they will you know it it allows opposition into their 22 give the opposition attacking opportunities they'll have to be careful you know we're only 13 minutes into this game and like you say Claire, three penalties I'm sure that's something they would have spoken about this week Yeah, Kira Bevan was talking about that very much so that's the forefront of their mind so they'll be looking to, to settle that down opportunity here for Scotland well, Scotland can't buy themselves a functioning line out right now and that's a third opportunity gone begging but again Wales just digging themselves into a hole at the breakdown. Yeah, not releasing, I think, that one was for. You know, from a turnover can be difficult, but Scotland, interesting what will happen here. You know, they've just gone to the corner twice. Functioning line-out hasn't quite operated, probably as they wanted to. So now looking to go for points. I think that's the right option, considering how, how Nelson kicked uh, uh, the conversion recently and just, yeah, how that line out, just settling it down. Both sides just making sort of errors and penalties, so just, just settle things down. Yeah, it looked like the last line out may be there. Um, the communication or the call wasn't quite right. Ridge Malcolm looks to go up. But here's the penalty, not released really in over the ball. As you can see, with Nelson's hair, it is blowing an absolute hooli out there. The wind hasn't died down at all but compared to her last one. This should be fairly straightforward, although she'll have to keep an eye on that shot clock. <laughs> Easy does it. Ten plays three. She knew exactly how as long was left, didn't she? She's practised that in her routine, but it's, it's a nice new dimension to the game. And us being able to see that clock um, tick down and, you know, putting pressure on the kickers, they've got a set amount of time, and we've seen in, the, in other internationals, maybe players haven't quite uh, stuck to the time given.
Just a wee knock on there by, by Lloyd, just settling him back into the 15s after he's been playing GB7s. The light there, I don't know in the shade as well, who knows, but uh, an opportunity here for, for Wales. Yeah, uncharacteristic, isn't it? But I think you're right, Heather. You know, we can see up here the shadow on the field. The ball is probably in the light and then into the to, to the shadow, which is quite difficult. Yeah. You can lose, lose sight of it a little bit. But a lucky escape, I think, from Wales. They've got an opportunity here now, regain possession in the Scottish half. And after the last uh, 10 minutes, I'm sure they'll be looking to go through some phases and keep that, that momentum and, and get a bit of a foothold in the game. They really held the ball in there, but it's eventually off time with the scrum half past the outstretched fingertips of Flaky George, but that's all right because Nell Metcalf, who is in such a turtle patch right now, is able to gather that one and scamper back in field. Lewis, her teammate from Gloucester Hartbury, the latest to have a chug. And another cherry and white, and another. There are so many of them out on the field. Johan Cunningham speaking in the week about his desire to bring all of that momentum, all of that feel-good factor into his Welsh outfit. Bevan on now to George. No heads. Mentioned her distribution game, but she's never afraid either to have a go herself, and you could see her there up the guts of the blue jerseys before her. What a rip from Emma Orr. No back made more dominant tackles. All turnovers in the championship last year, and she's already got one on her tally now. Here is Christine Belisle. And now Nelson, line speed from Butchers there, causing havoc in the Scottish back line. But now they get it away, and now Orr, ball in two hands, pops it out to Gran. It's going to be a foot race between Gran and Heskiff, and oh, she absolutely leaves her for dead. Joyce as ever is there on the covering tackle but Wales on the scramble Scotland up and into the 22 and the volume here at the arms park is deafening what a break from Scotland bringing six wins worth of swerve and verve and confidence into this encounter yeah, you were talking about Emma Orr in the defence there, but there she was making the turnover, the rip, reading the fact that uh, Wales are doing the pop pass, the extra, the tip, and then doing the, the release pass out there to, to Grant again. Just absolutely amazing. Going for the kick. How good is Grant? <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. We're 18 minutes in and, and the line breaks on the edge. She is electric. Oh, she is flying down that wing. You know, and her footwork, you've seen it, it, it chase her feet then. Sorry, but Jazz play. Joyce, fair Sorry, play, you know, okay. that's what Jazz that's gives it, aside. She's a yeah. work rate of relentlessness to chase back, no, fine, you know, and a determination right, uh, to make that down, hit. You know, she eight, does Jenny yeah, Hesketh you know, in the backfield with her feet, but Jazz Joyce so never gives up. And how many one, times have we seen her making tri-saving tackles? Well done, Jazz Joyce. Yeah, showing her her Olympic pedigree, double Olympic, double Olympian, and just, yeah, absolutely to get done and then chase back, outstanding. But Grant, as you say, yeah. Fra Francesca McGree yeah. coming back um, for, from injury, not in the squad today, uh, played 9 out of 9 on the left wing uh, last year for, for Scotland, but um, carrying an injury. So Grant started on the, the right wing uh, last year and now in the left wing, and it's really it's working. Yeah, there seems to be space on that edge, doesn't it, for Scotland at the moment yeah, yeah. to exploit the show. That's something Wales will look at. You know, there seems to be an extra player on, on that edge that well, they've identified they can exploit, fine. but I've got to be I'm honest, Grant's acceleration, but then her ability to control her feet and footwork has been exceptional so far this game. Scotland needs another line-out. They need to get this set-piece functioning because there's no denying the way they're managing territory right now. Just got to get those arrows to find the dartboard. Wales just looking to buy themselves a little bit of a foothold here so they can pop it back in the pocket where George is lurking. And use his waist. They've got Bevan's boots as well. No scrum half kicks more in last year's edition of this tournament and she obliges here but fails to find touch so it's Grant. She went Lillicraft's new favourite player who has that one. Orders very well to keep hold of that Velcro on her fingertips as Thompson pops it on out and now here is the debutant Alex Stewart with a fend like a piston 
You haven't said Evie Gallagher's name yet, but we're going to say it plenty this afternoon because that is Why just trademark look? Gallagher. Chicken wing out the back, and here she goes again with the scamper back against the grain. Takes a pair of Welsh tacklers to bring her down. And now Belial, Scotland back into the 22. Spending so much time in these advantageous positions and the flexibility of Thompson to get that away out onto the wing. Where they find Rona Lloyd. Talked about Jazz Joyce's pace and sevens pedigree. Rona Lloyd has got that in abundance. Patient play here from Scotland, but you get the sense they're ready to pull the trigger at a moment's notice. Bartlett queuing up, wanting to get her hands on the ball, but it's Wassel on an incisive line who gets the job done here. Now is the captain, Malcolm. So industrious, as is Bonner. He's at the base of that skirmish. No, back! Cries ringing out around the arms part. Wales think they've turned it. Wales have turned it. A crucial defensive intervention for the silent assassin of their side, Beth and Lewis. Yeah, great turnover by Beth Lou. You know, at, a, at an important time there. Scotland looked comfortable in attacking. You know, line outs not functioning for Scotland at the moment, and that might be a bit of a lucky escape for, <coughs> for Wales, but then comfortable in defence by the time. And Beth Lewin, Lewis, an important turnover, you know, in the tackle and then straight over the ball. Great tackle by Abby Fleming and Beth Lewis, joint tackle there. Beth stays on her feet and gets over the ball. Yeah. Crucial moment in the game. Calendar, a fellow turnover specialist, just congratulating her. Really nice to see. Yeah, Alex was uh, most turnovers, or, or second most turnovers next to Marley Packer That's last it. year. So, you know, that's Alex's trademark as well and uh, good to see them rewarding each other out there for important moments. Well, Corey and Grant, that feels like there's about five of her out on the field. She's underneath that one. One litter picking duty and now Orr out onto Thompson. That midfield pairing we saw in the Celtic Challenge playing for Edinburgh, but balls knocked on. And then Munarini doesn't like what she sees. Back we come. Yeah, Scotland are really managing to get that last pass away, which is uh, just great to see. Uh, Emma Orr is really being instrumental. Meryl Smith as well, just coming into line and giving that extra pass. Um, Wales are closing them down, but Scotland are just managing. We see here, good hands there. Lisa Thompson really just not quite going to uh, hand for, for Lloyd there, but Lisa Thompson... Again, coming back from, from GB7 uh, um, Olympic squad... And just yeah, just maybe slightly high for Rona to, to check her run. Yeah, at least as well there though, doesn't she? To always hold her feet. You can see Nell's coming in, the defenders coming on her to manage to get that ball away. She does exceptionally well. And if Rona takes that, she's in a heap yeah. of space on this right hand side. So um, you know credit to Scotland, they're managing with the pressure the Welsh defence is putting on them to still find that edge player and they're keeping their width very well. Oh, Rachel Malcolm enjoys that one. Scrum penalty for Scotland, and I'll leave either of the multiple internationals to my right to explain what they think went on there. Yeah, she was saying number three, so it's two Pilotto just bringing the, the scrum down. You've got to got to stay up, and um, yeah, so that's uh, that's why the scrum and the penalty has gone to to Scotland. And uh, another opportunity here, and they have gone, have gone. They're trusting their line out. They were in training yesterday. They just do line out after line out after line out, and it is something that they they, they back themselves on. Quite the nudge to find touch there. So it's a fine attacking position for Lana Skeldon, but three line outs, one, two loss. That's off button, no pass snips, and there is another one, Kruan you've skippered in these test match arenas something's clearly not clicking in the Scottish line out who needs to be the leaders what needs to change Sorry, girl. Uh, yeah something's not functioning there is it I don't know whether it's the call process Skeldon as well is normally on the money to be fair she's you know a very very good hooker and has been performing really well for Bristol this year but something's not functioning there and it's interesting actually Scotland obviously have trust and belief in it 
but they keep going there. And I thought, actually, their lineup would function a little bit better this year, given the return of Wassel and Bonner to this, uh, to this Scotland side. Well, it's infectious, whatever it is, because Wales have just overthrown that one and gifted Scotland, gift-wrapped the spot in there, 22, Malcolm. Dances in, dances out, brought to deck. Now Nelson across the face and all whips that one out to Grant. How many times can we say her name in the opening half hour of this fixture? Scotland leading by seven. Just that one try from Grant. Back, right, and then a back, pair of traded back. penalties. Just a reminder, Scotland have never won in Wales in the Six Nations. Not since Italy joins the championship. They won't care about those numbers, though. The only numbers that matter to Brian Easton's side are the numbers on the scoreboards. No heads! But Wales have turned it. Ben Fientaf sets off from the base of that one. That's good. Come back. Knock on. Scotland need to have a word not only about their line-out at this stage, but also about their efficiency. Because we haven't looked to our left for quite some time, but they're only one try to the good. Yeah, as I say, just a few few Clear. errors just creeping in, just Clear. having patience in that 22. The pressure's Clear. good, and they're doing that extra pass, but it's just finishing off. And, and Wales, to their credit, great work at the, uh, at the breakdown, getting those crucial turnovers. There, look at that, great work there by Tuvlotu. They've had a lot of entries into, into Wales' 22, you know, and we call that gold zone. You get in there, you've got to come away with points, and they'll probably be disappointed, actually, with the amount of times they managed to turn... Gross. Possession and territory into points because they've entered this at least half a dozen times in, 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 in my watch, you know. And uh, Wales have had a couple of a couple of escapes, and they'd be they'd be looking to relieve pressure here now. Jazz Joyce with all the speed in the world, but opts to drop it to her laces and. Gets them out of the 22, which does put pressure back on Scotland's line out, I suppose. Oh, look, I love that bravery from Wales, you know, looking to play, even though they've been under pressure. It's bravery to get the ball to the edge. It is something on. We know Jazz Joyce is, is the danger player for Wales. We know she's going to create something for nothing if anyone is. And, you know, I love that they're getting ball in hand to, to the edge. You know, if they'd kicked from, from, the, from the scrum directly, probably would have had the same re reward with regards to where the line-out is currently and they can put pressure on the Scotland line-out here, which they have. That's four lost in the space of half an hour, but balls anyone's to play with. Yeah, it just shows match intensity, op opening game of, of the Six Nations. It's just, yeah, just ironing out oh, these fine yeah. details. We're in, the, we're in the first half hour. Scotland already have surpassed their, their total of uh, points scored in, in the first half hour. Last year they got eight points uh, in total across the five matches and today they're already on ten. But a long way to go for both sides. I see your analysis, Heather, and I raise you one other fact. Scotland really struggled in the opening half hour of games. Wales at their most lethal in the 10 minutes before half time. Is that the sort of thing you talk about in the week? Yeah, very much so. And I think for it, in any game, I think the 10 minutes before half time, Joanna, I don't know if you agree, and the 10 minutes after half time are absolutely crucial. I mean, just time to build. Um, you're, already, you're halfway in, the both sides are settled in, and now's the time to really put the foot down. Absolutely, you know, because when you go in at half time, that's what you remember is that 10 minutes just before you, you've got in the change room, and then the same after, you know, it's, it's momentum shifting moments, it's, it's moments that you remember. Yeah, and um, yep. It's been all Scotland so far this game, so I'm sure Wales be looking to change that narrative now with, with the la la last 12 minutes of this half. And what's exciting as we rewatch Corey Grant scooting in in that far corner is that she's amongst a coterie of brilliant Scottish backs. Francesca McGee, who made her breakout campaign last year, she's not available, but she'll be back in the next couple of weeks. Chloe Rolly's on the bench. Scotland have an absolute abundance of riches in this department. And this is the difference now, I, I think Heather will agree, is the strength and depth that you're in squads. Like, Brian's got this headache now over Brian! what does he do, you know? Grant has played well for the first 28 minutes, so she continued to play that well, and what does he do about bringing McGee back in? But... Those are the headaches you want as a coach, and I think that's uh, brilliant for the women's game and the way the women's game is going.
absolutely. Just pushing each other on, pushing the standard of your own team and, and the whole and the whole game uh, globally as a whole. But yeah, fantastic scrum there by, by Wales talking of, of standards. Kelsey Jones, Paris and Tuvalotto winning that penalty. George can't find touch, does find Smith. So she returns it with a little bit of interest on it. Hasker, the newbie, pops it back to George, who along with Helen Nelson made more kicking meters than any other player last year. They've got cannons on them, the pair of them, and we find ourselves at halfway. Yeah, she'd be disappointed not to find touch with a penalty. You know, this would be a, a Wales line out in a similar position if that was a touch finder, but then redeems herself with that um, exit from the 22 then, but got a huge boot. And, and what out there today, Claire, the wind is going to play a huge impact on, the, on this game. And I believe the wind is against Wales at the moment from when I was uh, stood on, on pitch side earlier, so with Scotland, which would be a huge advantage in this game. Smart move by Scotland there, shortened line out. Good decision. Safe as houses, although Massinson's really having to excavate the pill there. Eventually, she finds Nelson. No hands! On your feet! Back it goes, and this time the boot's the option, utilising that wind, because they'll only have it at their backs for another 10 minutes. Joyce now with options and a bit of a run-up, which you don't want to allow the speedster at the best of times. She's well wrapped up, though. It's got a little bit bitty this. Both sides hurtled no, please, from no, the traps in the opening 10 minutes. But whoever strikes next, you feel, has a chance to really wrestle back momentum. And Nelson needed to deal with that one better because Nell Metcalf is flying off and fancies her chances, although she is bumped off by the Scottish standoff. <laughs> Look at Alcal celebrating on the floor there. That is what she's about, you know, in a crucial moment she'll get in there. She's a turnover queen and uh, fair play, you know, that, that's what it means to her again, that turnover. She was celebrating on the floor there and enjoyed that moment. She's the closest thing that the women's game has to a poltergeist. She must be a nightmare to play against. Claire, I would love to know what that means. Yeah. My vocabulary doesn't quite... Uh, sorry, <laughs> maybe it's my Welshness, Claire. She's a demon. She's a she little is an demon. Absolute demon. Just a blur of whipping scrunchy and platinum blonde hair. Oh, I said it earlier, what you see is what you get, you know. She's an absolute nuisance on the field. Exactly what you want from your seven, being a nose at every breakdown. You know, G in the team, uh, vice-captain this year. And, and well deserved, you know, she captained Brith on Thunder exceptionally this year. You know, she's found herself in this squad, a starting player consistently, and, and, and she is a motivator. But what she does best is she leads from the front, you know. So what you see is exactly what you get from her, and I love that. And she's a, an absolute nose as a seven. You just mentioned Brith on Thunder. That's part of the Celtic challenge, which really came to life, it feels, this year. Just for those watching on who might not know what that competition is, what is it and how productive is it proving already in this championship? I think it's exceptional, it's outstanding, you know, to give girls the opportunity to play uh, another quality of rugby within Wales, within Scotland and, and within Ireland is, is hugely important um, and it's prepared players like Al Cal for this occasion today. Wells' girls are crisp at the line-out, but Scotland thwart them immediately and haul them down onto the 4G here in Cardiff. They think they've stolen it back. Oh, they have. Possession is proving awfully difficult to sustain this afternoon. Eight minutes remain on the half. Not had a score since that Helen Nelson penalty. Wales is ball, they pilfer it yes again and look who's at the heart of it. Yeah, pressure on, wasn't there? She put a huge amount of pressure on Matteson there, looking for the box. Al Cal was ready for it, pressure on, resulted in turnover. And I don't know what's happened in this Welsh squad for the last four or five minutes. They seem to have fire in their bellies, they're celebrating everything. 
Something's triggered with them. Were they nervous at the start? But they seem to have found a new level of energy at the moment. Yeah, Evie Gallagher did really well to get that turnover ball. But yeah, at the back there, Matteson just surrounded. Yeah, real pressure there by Wales. Yeah, Callender just get to getting her, pushing her back into the rut. Great team play. Great. No, I wasn't in the run for me. We need to be sucked. The sucker was good, and we need to catch the ball. That's my view, but yeah, we can. Just, we can yeah, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Yeah. This will be of some concern to Scottish fans because Emma Wassel looks to have a considerable discomfort there. But the tape going on the boot implies she will stay with us, and yes, Heather, it would take wild horses to tear Emma Wassel out of the Scotland jersey. Well, she did do 54 in a row uh, until she, she got injured. She missed the Six Nations last year, and so this will mean so much to her playing today. So, yeah, okay. hopefully she'll be she'll be able to continue and the medics will be able to, to help her out. But, yeah, a real mainstay for Scotland. We talked about their line-out, but it's her work in the loose and the mall, the mall as well, the line-out mall. And also just, yeah, real tackle, real presence. Uh, calls the line-out, but just a real presence for Scotland. I wonder what we'll see here. <laughs> I'm pretty certain it'll be a driving more from this Welsh pack. There's no way I'm taking you up on that, bat. <laughs> it's a monstrous Welsh pack, we know that. Okay. And Kelsey Jones with the ball held in one hand to the side of the field. That is a maestro in this department. Standing for the sun. Scored so Inside. many yeah. on the way to Gloucester Hartbury's maiden Premiership title last year. She lines this one up now. Up goes Lewis. Safely down it comes and on rumbles a crimson avalanche. Again, Scotland's small defence standing firm. Sack is good. Yeah, no, Sack is good. Unplayable. Red scrum. No, wasn't a mole. Wasn't a mole. Unplayable. Red ball. It's a great sack by Sarah Bonner there. Wasn't a mole. Wasn't a mole. Sack is good. Stopped it at so straight away. Like the ref said, it wasn't a mole. Sack was good. Sorry. Immediately yeah, knew, me, knew where it was like going and got under that. So uh, fair play, Sarah Bonner. Yeah, she missed last year's Six Nations as well. So again, just getting really stuck in there. Sack's good. Sack's good. Referee confirming that the the sack was good. Wales still in a good attacking Crash. position here, you know, five metres out scrum, tied the forwards into that scrum. We're seeing Nell Metcalf just parked five behind that scrum. Two, I wonder if this is a, a training ground move Seven, and where does she transition to? And here she comes, Metcalf loitering on the blind side, mischief in her eyes, but Lewis decides to take the muscular route and finds herself three metres short. Maul is formed. Scotland have just sacked one of these with brilliant efficiency and they've done it again! Yeah, the hand goes up and the celebration goes up and quite rightly so. These are the moments that matter. We saw Calendar in the 22 and the other end and there Scotland sacking that one and now that was a huge. Beth and Lewis is not easy to stop. Good, good off the back of the scrum. Brilliant team stop. Let's go ladies. Yeah, good and physical carry to begin with. But to be fair, Helen Nelson gets in there and then who, who arrives? Evie Gallagher, you know, three or four of them are in there. That urgency from that Scottish pack to hold that tackle up was there. You know, they know it's desperate times and that urgency stopped that uh, dominant ball carry there. Yeah, Alex Stewart first there, first cap, excellent play. What a shove by the Welsh women, but Evie Gallagher with that trademark purple yeah, hair, like a livid power puff girl, manages to grab an extra five metres or so. Wassel met thunderously by Natalia John. Ball stays with the Scots, leading Wales by a converted try as Nelson spirals that one wickedly into the hands of Metcalf, who flirted with the touchline, but now finds herself with a head of steam. 
and again come Wales. Scoreless since that early Bevan penalty. Backwards. It's fine, a hand work there to keep the ball with the women in red. Now Bevan on to Tua Pilotu, named in the team of the championship after monopolising the player of the match accolades last year. She was totemic. Here is Joyce, bumps off Nelson, wrapped up and slammed to turf. Now Purse. Bevan down the short side. Butchers, I think she spied a little bit of space, but the door slammed shut by Sarah Bonner, who thought for a moment she might have stripped that. Wales playing with patience. Lewis with the placement. Now here is George, finds Jones, but Rona Lloyd has flown from the ranks of the Scottish defenders to smother that one. George on a plate for Fleming, the Harlequin. And now here is George again. I think Scotland defence there really putting Wales under pressure, Rona Lloyd's tackle there, really shutting the door, coming in the outside and pushing them back beyond the 22. But um, another opportunity here. But we see here, look at that spot tackle. Real fight there. Yeah, she did well there. They were numbers down, so she has to take Hannah, player on ball. Because Nell's on the wing there, they were numbers down, so great spot tackle for Rona. What's pleasing is Wills have managed to get some possession, go through the phases. See the forward, forwards coming into the game now, ball carrying, tipping, going into that power game that, you know, last year, Six Nations, the forwards went through a lot of work and I can see the, now the Welsh team trying to get into that game to dominate some possession and get, over, get some front football, you know. The Welsh front row are big ball carriers for, the, for this side and we've seen Gwentley and Cecilia, Kelsey stepping up now with, with some big carries for this Welsh side. Set! the open side go the hosts and the captain met by her opposite number all clattering into Jones Bevan finds Fleming who made her return from injury via a bit of time with the Welsh sevens set up it's gained some real speed and agility with it referee's hand goes out and the handbrake can come off George with a scuddering effort into the 22 but we'll come back for the penalty yeah, just off feet there, so an opportunity here. Number one, off feet. Leah Bartlett just coming off, off feet at the ruck. Yeah, Wales, um, Shuan was just talking about the power play. You could actually hear them. I think I heard them say that that must be the trigger to say power play. That importance of points today, so yeah, taking them. Well, we promise you a close one. The red one is the shot clock. Absolutely delivering. You can hear Monarini there directing Kira Bevan to the shot clock, which is on the clock that we have in the stadium here. Just a reminder all these innovations coming into the Women's Six Nations for the first time this year, ahead of the World Cup, which is rolling into England in 2025. We have a bunker now for card decisions hopefully we won't need to talk about that this afternoon we've got a shot clock and we've got some very swanky mouth guards Thank you. but more on that later because Kira Bevan to narrow the gap to four points in Cardiff as the clock goes red Well, both kickers really feeling it this afternoon. Bevan's shot is a good one right as the shot clock expires. And at half-time in Cardiff, it's six playing ten. That Corrine Grant score in the corner, the only thing separating these two sides. 
had a history told us that this one would be poised on a knife edge. But which side will be heading in for their oranges, feeling more chipper about their opening 40? I think Scotland just started and there was a couple of uh, errors, but then they just came away and that we just talked about that Kareem Grant try. Amazing. That came after Kier Bevan, a penalty had settled the Welsh nerves. And certainly for the majority of that half, it was it was Scottish uh, possession and territory. But for sure, Wales have come back at the end of that first half and are really putting, as they could hear them say, power play and putting the pressure on and Scotland having to work really hard to keep them out. Last year, Heather, Wales were outmuscled. Sorry, Scotland rather, were outmuscled by Wales. They dominated them on the floor. They had the edge at set piece and their gain line ability, their ability to puncture and to carry Scottish defenders with them was just absolutely exemplary. But Scotland have fronted up today. Wales put phase after phase on them there in the dying moments of that first half. And Scotland's defensive system looks robust. Yeah, and very much from everyone like Evie Gallagher at the breakdown, uh, Alex Scott on debut doing a fantastic job and Rona Lloyd doing that spot tackle, crucial. Well, finally poised after 40 minutes here at the Arms Park in the second match of this opening round of the 2024 Six Nations. This second half is going to be intriguing indeed. It's Wales 6, Scotland 10. Well... An interesting first half, ladies. Uh, one positive, I suppose, and then a lot of missed opportunities. Um, let's start with the Scotland try. They would have been absolutely delighted with that. It's all gone a little bit awry since then. But Corinne Grant, I think you know, you've been waxing lyrical in commentary about her as well. Let's take a look at the try from a positive Scotland point of view first. Yeah, look, I think, um, you know, three points on the board from Wales, which was great. And usually you'd expect them to start well, but Scotland straight back out of the traps. And just as you see there, num Wales are actually numbered up. And in that point, you'd expect Hesketh to come in and close down that opportunity on the wing. But it's a missed tackle. She still had a lot to do. It's probably just around the speed of ball, which Scotland producing at that point. And then it's just about that read to close that gap and come in. But she had it all to do. And uh, it was a great finish. And yeah, it's a look, communication as well, isn't it? In, like, Hannah's inside Jazz there. Could Jazz push a little bit earlier? So that Wales defence communication is, is really key on an edge there. Yeah, I think as well, though, the power and pace from Kareem Grant there, that, that step to push through, she did brilliantly, and I think she's going to give a selection headache to uh, <laughs> Brian Eason come next week. And we saw another break from her as well. I mean, she didn't get it after that, but she, the speed, the step that she has... It's incredible. Yeah, she's playing really well for Saracens as well. She's only a seventh cap for Scotland, but she's proving why she needs to be out there. And um, she, she's, she's doing great. So I think um, if they can keep that momentum as well, they've got players outside. She had Rona Lloyd on her wing at one point. Um, so there's options all around there. We always travel with our own fan club, you'll be pleased to see. Um, in terms of Scotland, it kind of, that was it. There was a bit of a, a full stop after that because so many missed opportunities. The line-out just didn't fire after that, did it? No, it didn't fire at all, really. And they, how many penalties do they have? They go to, to, to the corner and it didn't function in the way it would have wanted to. So I, I feel like Wales had a couple of get-out-of-jail opportunities, you know, not straight there, which is uncharacteristic, really, for, for, for Lana and... Uh, then an overthrow, so it was on the bounce. It kept going there. They have confidence in it with the return of uh, Bonner and Wassel to, the, to, the, to that uh, second row, but it hasn't functioned, I think, like it would hope. And if it had functioned, could that scoreline be a little bit different at half time? And that's a crucial point, Deborah, because we were talking about this. You know, 12 minutes, they could have taken three points in front of the post. They were brave, they went for the corner, it didn't work then, it didn't work again after that. There comes a time where, particularly in a match as tight as this, you just need to get those points. Yeah, and we said in the beginning they're full of confidence and belief and they backed themselves to go for that corner, but it wasn't working time and time again. And the scoreline could be ticking over even more if they'd taken those opportunities with the kicks. I know it's windy, but those unforced errors in the line-out is just, as you said, uncharacteristic. So they need to get that right for the second half. Rachel, I, I think as well that sometimes Scotland stop themselves from scoring points, but Wales managed to stop them as well. They, they worked well in the turnover. They did, they worked really well. And, and like you said, you know, 
you expect that Scotland line-out to be a threat. I think we said earlier, together, uh, 12 of their 15 tries or something came from that last season. So you expect that, but it's just the Wales, Wales back row are hanging on, like keeping this team in there, really. They're being frustrating at the breakdown. Again, you can see Beth and Lewis here, just a really good body profile over the ball. That chest is right down to the ball, and there's no way they're going to get it, get her out of there without um, the ball as well. And this time it's Alex, Alex Callender. It's funny because they're all happening in like in both 22s, yeah, so you absolutely. can tell the amount of pressure that's on there. This one's a combination between the two, so a great shot from Alex Callender allows the opportunities to get on board. And Wales love doing a turnover, like yeah. you know, we, we hang our hats on that, especially in the back row. That's a big thing, but at the moment, it's keeping them in the game, which yeah. is key. And I think it's those Scotland errors and that, that um, persistent defence and persistent effort from the back row that's just that fine balance we've seen it in both sides we've seen it in, in the Wales 22 we've seen it in the Scotland 22 which is funny because normally both teams struggle to get in there yeah, this time they're in there they're just not converting yeah it'll be interesting to find out what the mood in the camps are and Jenny Drummond might be able to enlighten us A bit of Welsh and Scottish reaction. Courtney, first of all, we knew this was going to be a tight encounter and it's lived up to expectations so far. Yeah, we were saying beforehand, weren't we, that it's always close and especially in the last few years it's been a really, really close match. Um, I think Welsh oh, defence especially has been fantastic. Like Scotland have really, really brought it to us today. Um, but we just, I want to see, you know, the Welsh have the ball in hand a little bit longer and uh, hopefully we can get some more attacking plays in the second half now. Certainly. At least maybe a few missed opportunities, line-out issues for Scotland costing them. Yeah, yeah, I think we just need to improve our accuracy at line out, maybe just keep it a little bit more simple, keep composure, keep it calm, do stick with our process. Yeah. Switching sides now, you've got the wind with you. How much of a boost? Look, you got a wee cheeky smile there when I said that. How much of a boost is that going to be? Yeah, definitely. I played here last year and obviously the wind was a massive factor, which is probably actually playing the, the part in the, the lineup for the Scottish side. So I think having the wind is going to be massive for us this half, uh, especially with the people that in, in our team that have got the boots. So yeah, I'm excited to see how especially Seiki goes with the, with the wind in her side. Certainly, well, ladies, thanks very much. Great to see you back fit and healthy again. Good luck in the second half. Thank you so Thank much. You. Cheers. Thanks very much. Well, what Thanks a couple time. of years it has been for the Welsh second row, Natalia John. She has been plagued by injury for 18 months, but everything was put into perspective with the tragic death of her three-year-old nephew, Morgan. This is her family's story. Unfortunately, in October 2021, he was diagnosed with a rare form of cancer and unfortunately he passed away in June last year. You can see Natalia John. She comes out with her nephew Morgan. It's his very first rugby match since his initial diagnosis of a rare form of cancer. Now the players are also wearing Morgan's Army ribbons to highlight the bucket collection for him here today. He's a very brave little boy and we are thrilled he's here with us to support Auntie Natalia. I had an amazing opportunity playing against England where I got to carry him out on the pitch with me and I think, you know, that's one of my all-time favourite memories. It was just unlucky that in that game that I got another injury and, you know, it was probably my lowest point was being injured again, doing my calf and then losing him. Sorry. <laughs> it was really hard, but, you know, I was like... All I want is to make more memories in a Welsh jersey. And if I get to do it for him, that's just incredible. <laughs> the charity had a humble beginning, I suppose. It didn't begin as a charity, it was a fundraising effort. Opportunities to bring people together, it's all very community focused. That's generally where Talia tends to come in, as she's the sports personality and I have no sport ability <laughs> at all. It's, it's, it's funny one because like a lot of the time, People won't go, oh my God, are you, are you Natalia John? Like the rugby player, they'll go, oh, are you Natalie's sister? Are you Morgan's auntie? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I am. Since sharing Morgan's story online, two parents have come to me and said that they found their children had the same cancer at court much, much earlier. Obviously his story has almost helped other people and that means more to me than any money could ever mean. Because if Morgan didn't get to live at least someone else's child, then they don't have to go through what we went through. Morgan taught a lot of people that you can love above everything else. I think even when he was really poorly, he still had a kiss and a cuddle for you. Kind of like love transcended that. So we always say that cancer never won, love did.
gosh, that is uh, just incredibly emotional. Um, what a family who have been through so much, and Natalia just shows up time after time, loves the sport, and is just a, a wonderful player. Speaking of wonderful players, tomorrow will mark Marley Packer's 100th appearance in an England shirt. She's a mother, a centurion, a captain. Is there anything that this woman cannot do? Doesn't look like it so far. This is Oliver's world and I'm just living in it. And here he is. I got your present. You got me a present? A dinosaur bag? Yeah. Yeah, is this your favourite bag? Come sit here then and let's have a little look what's in here. What is it? You got me a present. It's empty. I'm only joking. What's this? Let's open it. Open it and find out. Oh my goodness, who is that? Yeah. Mummy Pickle. I've got your I've got my thumb up. That's my little rose. This was the first ever time you were a mascot for me. Uh, and I didn't sing. No, you didn't sing. Mm -hmm. I want to bring it here. You want to bring it Well, I promise you something. In 2025, from now until then, I'll do everything I can to try and bring that trophy home. I'm 100 and not out. That's the way I see it. I see 2025, home World Cup. I've got younger players at my heels. For me, I just need to keep pushing myself. But right now, I feel like I've got so much more to to give to the Red Roses, but also to inspire other people to pick up the ball. She's had an incredible career, and as she says, not out. You've all played against her. Um, how tough is Marley Packer to try and contain? Yeah, I think the biggest compliment you can, you can probably give her is that she's a nightmare to play against. <laughs> Absolute nightmare. Um, but look, she's, she's developed her game and she's uh, adapted and evolved. And I think now that she's that can, uh, captaincy role as, as well, you know, it's, it's given a different shape to her game. She's got to find that balance between being an aggressive seven that we, we're so used to seeing her and also managing the conversations with the referee. But look, I think, she, you know, she's, she's an, had an incredible career and she will continue to. And I think she mentions in that VT around... The younger players now coming through, chopping at her heels. That's that's everything she needs to drive herself to get to the top again in, in 2025. And look, I wouldn't be surprised to see her roll out of the World Cup for sure. 100 caps, it's not easy to get. I mean, they are England's most capped players. And you've got, obviously, Sarah Hunter right at the very top. But it's the longevity for these players as well, isn't it? Yeah. She's one of those players as well that plays with so much passion. She leaves absolutely everything out on the pitch. And you can ask more for a leader as well. So she leads her troops into battle. Um, and she's been playing great for the PWR as well. Top try scorer in the PWR. Um, so she, you know, puts those prompts in week in, week out. Like you said, she's been developing her game. And, yeah, her, her ambitions are not to stop yet. She's, yeah. she's going to keep going. So we'll see her for a few more years to come, I'm sure. Well, England is tomorrow uh, against Italy, and that is on BBC. But let's turn our attention back to this match. Uh, Shuan, you're going to head back up to commentary for this, but what can we expect in the second half? We've got the benches to empty as well. Yeah, I think we'll see some huge impact come up, come up, come off the bench. You know, you've got Karis Phillips uh, on there from a Welsh perspective. Um, you've got some youngsters on there, Sean Jones at, at nine as well, who is uh, an energetic, really... I've been super impressed with how she's played Celtic Challenge and, and Rachel would know her well from, from Sale, you know. So I think we'll see some energy come off the bench, but like we have over the years, it's a close game. It's within seven at the moment, it's within four. It could go either way, and I think the Scotland team will be looking to tighten up some of the areas, but Wales have got wind in their, in their sails the second half, and I think with big boots for Clakey George, there'll be a lot of territory game out there. Before we turn our attention to the second half, let's just remind ourselves what happened in the first half. That was the first half. Now comes the second half in the company of Shuan, Heather and Claire.
there's an awfully long way to go yet in the championship, of course. But this could prove decisive as the standings solidify. Scotland have never won here and Cardiff is about to become an even more hostile environment for them because it is Wales with the wind at their backs now and just four points to make up as Elisa Thompson all in blue gets us back underway. It's a low and questing restart but Bevan thinks she spied a little bit of unoccupied space but swiftly to it is Meryl Smith. The Scottish side unchanged from that opening 40. Wales have made one change. Joan Cunningham has brought on Saracen Georgia Evans, wearing a 19. She's replaced Natalia John. Scotland's ball to play with now, and the try scorer Grant, formerly a DMP Shark, formerly a Melbourne Unicorn, heads up the near touchline, and Bonner takes it on. Mattinson on to Nelson on the pirouette. It's Skelton on the juggle. Yes! All the tricks coming out of the thistled box. Taking back. Nelson now dropping it back and finding Thompson, who definitely has spotted some space, although the bounce is kind for Heskiff on debut. Stop three. Okay. And the ball beats Helen at Nelson to the touchline. Heather, you were scrutinising the statistics at half time. What have you come up with? What goodies have you got for us? Well, for Wales, for sure, two turnovers each calendar and Lewis. So I think Scotland will be looking to go anywhere away from Lewis and calendar. They're so good at that breakdown. The try from Grant came from quick, fast hands, fast play, getting it wide, moving the ball. And if, if Scotland can nail their line outs, four lost at the moment, but I think that will come and um, they can back their line outs but it's just yeah fast hands and um, yeah getting in behind Wales definitely using using the pace out wide and they've got the pace up front but Wales for sure we know how, how dangerous they are in that 22 when they're when they're attacking themselves well those are Lockhart's digits here are the ones of our win predictor all shiny oh. and new two percent for the draw wouldn't put it past this game it has been finely poised but as things stand Wales just with the upper hands. Oh, bodies hurting towards the fray there, and Georgia Evans right in the thick of it and making her impact felt immediately. That's the impact you want from your substitutions, isn't it? Half time substitution. Georgia obviously been playing really well for, for Saracens but also in WXV I actually thought she was one of the standout players for, for Wales so she'd be disappointed she won't start in today so she's come on and stamping her ground straight away and uh, a great turnover good driving more stop okay, stoppage yeah, there by, by Wales Scotland's line now looking to function a little bit better but in and amongst that Butchers Cecilia and whoever starts well this game, I think, could have a huge impact on, 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 this, on this result today. Yeah, I wrote my notes. Don't get in a dogfight with Wales. It's Scotland maybe <laughs> wanting that, and that's exactly what happened there. Georgia Evans to the four. Outstanding play. Crouch! Front rows unchanged. Curse, Jones and Tua Pilotti, Bartlett, Skeldon and Belial. Lewis had just about oh, lifted oh, that, which allows Mattinson to off. grab her and drag her down. It's awkward for Wales now at the breakdown. They've got to take their time here before Calendar with Evans in support. The beribboned enforcer yeah, of Johan Cunningham's side. George, a little crossfield effort, looks to find choice, but it just skittles out into the 22. That's the right option there for me, from Shaky George. Great vision, and I wanted to see this come into a game, you know. The kick passes, crossfield clicks, kicks, the variation. There's lots of space out there. The kick is really good, actually. Just maybe a little bit too deep, but could Jazzy get on a bike a little bit and get, get under that? But really good option, looking at stretching the defence, you know. From that kick now, are Scotland going to be thinking this is going to come across, open up a little bit more in defence and allow gaps for Wales to go through? So I love that variation from Flakey and uh, hopefully we'll see a little bit more of that. 
spoke to Johan Cunningham in the week about whether or not this was the time of Clakey George and how about that for commentators Kerr she's overcooked it didn't account for the win she now has at that prodigious back but we will continue to shower her with praise because she does deserve it and he said that this 10 jersey is hers to grow into it's her time now she just needs some reps in it yeah and we know how, how the wind is so variable at the moment so just adjusting to it and just getting a feel for it but amazingly she got her first cap at back row and now she's, she's starting 10 in Wales and there will be a bit of a nerves as well to be in Wales on that starting jersey today but she's such a talent such a talent yeah we can't underestimate her she is class I've been fortunate enough to play with her in Gloucester last year she pulls the strings in Gloucester with Mo inside her clicky at 10 you know, that is a dominant side there and your half-backs have a huge impact on that. So I'm hoping what we see from Flaky is what we see in Gloucester be able to come to the, to the Wales frontier, you know, and she's an exceptional player. And I, her skill set, you know, on the training field, when you watch her train, her kick, her pass, um, the speed, the power of those kicks and passes as well are, are phenomenal, her ability to offload. So, you know, she is an exceptional talent and I, I hope you're right, Claire, that she does grow into this uh, to this Welsh shirt. Crouch! And one of the other debutants there, Stuart. Wearing seven Boys! for Scotland. She's 19 Boys! years old and straight into the fray of a Celtic um, kerfuffle in the Six Nations. Scotland scrum to draw again, blood at the scrum, but we'll have that one again. Three and what is impressive, Heather? Three over seven. No, no, no. Short. A bit short and not, not pushed before. As Clara Munarini explains just what she wants to see at this particular set piece, what is impressive is the, the strength and depth waiting on that Scottish bench when it comes to front row replacers. Because Lisa Coburn, who's a brilliant test match animal, hasn't even made the 23. Yeah, absolutely. It's great to see her back to, to full fitness. Um, Eileen Clark is, is the tight head cover. And Molly Wright, who's been out long-term injury with a knee, is back as well. So great to see that. And uh, Ellis Martin, first Six Nations if she gets on at Hooker, which would be superb. Strength and depth, which they will need because they've got a slender four-point lead here. And momentum's definitely been the way of the Welsh recently as Grant collides with Joyce and Masterson just about peels the pill away from the touchline. It's the latest carry from Lloyd. And now Malcolm. Such a tireless operator. There's another carry to those she's accruing this afternoon. Fans are getting into this one now. Cheering the women in red on seen so many turnovers in the opening 40 and they want a couple more. Mattinson up and over. Joyce has it. Grant in hot pursuit. So is Stuart. He wondered for a moment if she might have filched it. Oh, she has. That's brilliant from the debutant. Gallagher places it backwards. Calendar thrashing in the midst of that breakdown, doing all she can to disrupt as Orr sets off. Eyes are light. Oh, Emma Orr, that is awesome! Throwing to Emma Lloyd. Lloyd against Joyce. The hurdle. Oh, the razzmatazz and the score. Sevens flyer versus sevens flyer. And just look at the Scott fly. Absolutely superb play there. It was Gallagher's work off the floor that set that up. And we talked about MR um, previously and her ability to give, like there, she knew that uh, the Welsh defence were pushing up and she opted just to glide through round the outside. They were a bit narrow, two on one pass out to Lloyd. And we'll see it here. Great work there. There's the turnover. Gallagher working hard. And there it is, she realises that they're pushed up hard and goes round on the edge of the defence. Two on one. Welsh defence there, just not, not narrow. And Lloyd did well, a little hurdle at the end. Super try. Yeah, there's space on the blind side there, isn't it? 
think we've seen Hannah Jones maybe go go past bullet ball. It looks like Wales are trying to put a a push, a hot defence on, get up hard. And then Orr does exceptionally well to get outside and spot that space. And she's been doing that, as you said earlier, last Six Nations. And then she's grown into it and, and performing in Celtic Challenge. She's a force to be reckoned with in this Scotland side. And how about the boots on Helen Nelson today? Pinpoint. That's two touchline conversions now. And how crucial those might prove as the dust settles on this one. We've been talking about how Scotland need to use that width, need to use their passing, and they managed to get that pass there to finish that off. Lloyd from try scorer to kick off receiver, and Smith thumps it into the packed out stands opposite us. Yeah, it's great to see, isn't it? Nearly a full Cardiff Arms Park today. When I'm looking across here, that stand looks almost full. The stand below us looks almost full, and it's great to see how the women's game's grown and developed. And now we've got a standalone women's Six Nations. People can get behind it. Finished up with the men's last week and can still support international rugby. So great to see so many people come out here to Cardiff this afternoon. And if they're smart, they can head along to the Principality in round five because Wales will be ending their campaign against Italy in the big house. We're playing in the shadow of it today. Mind you, this rugby is lighting it up. Half an hour to play. Scotland leading now by 11 points. Wales looking for a repost. Lewis in as acting at scrum half. Callender drops a shoulder, dunks a Scotswoman. Purse with Evans in support. She's made herself felt since coming on. Wales still troilous and that one thumped away to no avail. Oh, Meryl Smith has done really well to scoop that one off and send it flying upfield. Joyce has got Rona Lloyd for company in the 22. But now Bull under one arm. Tackle comes in from behind. The two Scottish wingers in tandem. Talked about managing territory at Heather Lockhart. Will Scotland find themselves in a good position yet again. Wonderful pick there by Thompson, absolutely wonderful. But it's, it's Smith's footwork to get out that 22. Just outstanding. Just, just real assured play. And not just a kick from Thompson. That might well have been our first 50-22. That's the 50 side of things. And that's the 22 part. Yeah, I thought that might have been a 50-22. Great kick by Thompson there. Scotland winning that kick battle. I really like, you know, I know it's been in a few years, the 50-22 really rewards, you know, good good tactical kicking if you get a pinpoint right, right. And there's the line out, there's the reward for getting the 50 -20. You get the line out if you kick the ball from your own half into the opposition's 22. And there's the rewards if you can nail your line out, which they've done. Massenson clobbered by Butchers. And straight away the ball returns to the hosts. Yeah, good pressure by Alicia Butchers there. Maul has stopped. Knew exactly where Madison was. Pressure on. Resulting in a turnover, forcing the error from the Scottish halfbacks. Nice touch there by Orr. Just went and said, next one to Thompson, which great, that's what you want from your centre pairing. Yeah, the team morale seems really good, doesn't it, in the Scotland side from what I've seen and heard over the last uh, few weeks and their prep the last few weeks. I caught up with Rach Malcolm yesterday and, you know, she was nothing but singing but praises for her, for her Scotland side and the, the morale, the culture seems to be really high at the moment in that camp. I think going to the, uh, like South Africa for WXV, that's like quality time to spend together, 30-30 in the squad, just that, you know, special times that you can really develop. According to Easton, the only time they don't look like family is when they're training 15 on 15, because these days it gets pretty heated. The competition for jerseys is so fiery. I love that, though. 
you know, you can get to the training park and you know there's competition there. So you're going to get a good battle out there. You're going to get something valuable from that win. session. People are not protecting win. themselves, but going at it hard because that will prep them the best and give them the best opportunity to be selected. So that's exactly yes, where you want to be, you know, as a squad. I think that's tension in the professionalism as well, because they have players that can come into camp and play 15 aside, which is just fantastic. Well, now Metcalf's afternoon's work is done. Her third cap completed, so on comes Karis Cox. You mentioned that Jenny Hesketh played England under 20, so too did Karis. Fahouf come over and now playing with feathers rather than roses on their chests she made her debut in that famous win Paris Cox against the USA in September just the latest bit of history ticked off by Johan Cunningham's women well, Kira Bevan on an arcing run and now Alex Callender adding some dynamite to proceedings Anna Jones in at scrum half Advantage. And Wales have the penalty advantage to play with, which is music to the ears of a chaos maker like Clakey George. And the ball is out onto the wing, and Cox has a chance to stretch her languid, lethal legs. We will return for the penalty. Much better phases there by the Welsh squad. Going through the phases, forward carries. It looked like a, a training park move from that line out, hitting Cecilia up, and then flashing no back, blind. Looked like Kirov. Here she goes, the go-to ball carrier. But credit to all year, all, all picks. I'm sorry, I got blank then. Gallagher, Gallagher, Gallagher. Uh, Gallagher. I knew it was Gallagher. Uh, picks her up well, you know. But then look at the flash back from from the Welsh side, going back to the corner now for the driving mall and Wills. We'll be looking to get this functioning pretty soon in this game. There's a look in Georgia Evans' eyes. She's just like, yeah, she's come on and she's going to make that impact, yeah. Well, it's an arcing, oh! risky line-out, but it does find Evans, who is hoisted high into the darkening cloud of skies and brings it down safely. Gallagher is being an almighty pest in the middle of that and Kira Bevan all five foot two of her we sets off on an adventure we were playing an advantage no 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 I give you sets the mark. off on another one I give you the mark I give you the mark it's three collapsing late sucking we're playing no, with that, the that, that advantage perfect. though perfect in terms of not perfect yeah 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 of course of yeah course. Scotland might need to be a bit careful here you know that penalty count, that momentum has actually flipped, you know, we've seen Still, Wales no, first half, pens conceded sorry. but that's really three. ranked okay, up the second sorry, half sorry, sorry, sorry. for I Scotland three. I believe they've conceded eight penalties so far, so when we compare that to first half, there's been a lot in the second half, they need to be careful because the referee might look at a they also need to be careful because Wales have a bit of steam behind them here, but look at the counter yeah. shove from the Scots Stopping that big red tractor in its tracks. Welsh bodies in oh, over Bevel. the ball. Crucial oh, defensive side. interventions Nine now from the Scots. No. Wales looking to eat into that lead to score themselves their first try of the afternoon. No, they have been stymied so far by this resolute Tartan wall. Shot. Oh, so close. Ball is placed backwards. Kelsey Jones borrowing, straining, squirming. Across and out to Lewis. Referee says it didn't make it over the whitewash and now it looks like it might just have been held up. Scotland going to the well here. Ball goes wide. Callender swallowed up by Nelson. And we'll listen in here because this could prove seismic. We've got a late sucking. We've got number nine playing uh, off feet, playing the, the ball, and another one playing the nine. So please be careful in this zone. We need a better discipline. Uh, we're not playing the nine, we're playing the player no, in the rock. No, no. 
He's not on both. Uh, they have uh, previous one played in a okay. played or, uh, yeah, the you're happy with the other picture? Yeah, absolutely. The last one. The last That's one what we're good. trying to do. The last one was yeah, good. Yeah. 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 Off it, go. Yeah, she's giving a bit of a warning there, After isn't you? she? You know, that is. You? I'm you warning you, we can't play the nine. Keep oh, infringing. Yeah. Maybe there'll be something different, even though that didn't come out of the referee's mouth. But they're infringing a lot at the breakdown there. Scotland are desperate measures, desperate times. Interesting. What are Wales going to do here? Yeah, look like they're changing it up a bit with a set penalty move. Cecilia Turpilotti with an appetite for the whitewash. Here she goes. She's scored again. She does it again, and at last, Cunningham's Colossuses find some attacking snarl. Yeah, please for the girls there. You know they've been pressing well the last ten minutes. They seem to have a bit of fire in their belly. They've got some territory in possession, and that is one for Cecilia straight off the training ground. Though I'd say, when we see this back, you know she taps the first. The first pod hits her fellow prop, Gwen Leanne Pierce. And then I think she knew, obviously, she was going into the pick and go. So that's one they probably practised. When we're five metres out in this position, what can we do? And then that momentum from her coming round the rack, picking the ball up. And that girl knows the way to the try line, that is for sure, especially from that distance out. So difficult to stop. It's amazing to think that only last year, the first game that she made her debut as prop. That's just, like, incredible. And two tries last year and same with her. So props confining well there. It's interesting, isn't it? I think how the women's games evolved now, the props within our game are massive ball carriers. They're not just scrummagers, they're massive ball carriers. How they get the team on front foot, and that's exactly what we see from this this world pairing. Very much so. Bella makes it a full seven point tall and we've got ourselves a bit of a game of whole blink first because neither kicker has missed a strike yet. 13 plays 17 with one quarter remaining. Scotland make a change now. Eliane Clark, the 23 year old tight head is on to replace Christine Belisle. Fresh legs at the scrum. Fresh muscle at the breakdown. Scotland! Six, thank you. Scotland taking their time, aren't they? Making sure they nail their process after the first half, and I'm sure that would have been the coach's message in the change room at half time. We need to up our accuracies here. And they have done to be fair to them the second half. Lana Skeldon, one of the only players on this pitch who can claim to have matched the prolific nature Why of Cecilia Tuopolossi's campaign last year. She sets off off the base of that lineup but injures herself in the process. She stayed down. So Scotland playing with 14. Their hooker lies on the ground. Lloyd has it on the far touchline. 10 metres shy. Where she managed that try a little bit earlier on. Thank you, But Lana Skeldon in real distress down there. Well, that's such a shame to sh see. Great player, great person, and she doesn't look comfortable there. I hope she's okay. Yeah, such a stalwart for Scotland. So, yeah, getting all the attention she, she requires. Of course, they'll have to play. The pendulum has certainly swung towards the red corner. But this one remains absolutely in the balance. They'll be talking intensely amongst themselves over there. Heather, if you're leading the Scotland huddle, what are you saying? I think that they've weathered the storm there. As we say, we knew that um, Wales are outstanding in the 22. Pressure, pressure, pressure. The line out, the set move, the set penalty move. Scotland will be looking to get quick ball again, nail their line out, and also and get the ball through the hands, use the width, use those 50 metre channels to finish. Shoan, putting you back in a Wales jersey. I know you thought you barely hung the thing up, but what are you saying over there? I'd be saying, you know, when we've got that territory in possession, we look we look comfortable, so I'd be saying we need to keep that territory in possession. Can we play in the right areas? It was the wind, it was our kicking game to make sure we're playing in the right areas. And then when set-piece functions and our, we've got our big forward ball carriers into the game, 
Wales are looking dangerous, so I'd be going back to that game plan to, to be able to, to get that kind of foothold and that dominance in, 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 in this team. But um, And just like errors-wise as well, you know, making sure we're, we're clearing the lines and just cutting out those errors. Whatever happens tonight, things don't get any easier for these two sides because Wales have to head along with the M4 to Ashton Gate, a familiar part of the country for them. So many of them play their rugby for Bristol Bears in Bristol, but they're taking on the Red Roses. And Scotland go back home to the Hive, absolutely, but they have to host France, one of the best sides in the world. Can they draw plenty of courage from what they've put out there over this first hour? I think there's been lots of lessons for both sides. You know, Scotland's functioning line now first first half. They would have learnt a lot then. It looks like they've corrected it second half. Wills, you know, new uh, new new side really with youngsters involved there and a new halfback com combination with uh, Kira Bevan and, uh, and Katie George now in that starting ten shirt for for Wills and some youngsters in in and amongst it. So you know they would have learnt a lot of lessons from today that they can embed ahead of next week. You know. Both teams didn't really know what today was going to go like because they haven't been able to review each other recently. You know, the prep would have been different. They would have looked at different things. Now teams will have games to look at to analyse how teams are playing. So definitely would have learned a lot of lessons. There's been some great positives out there, but they'll be looking to put the lot right as well. Both sides will be ahead of next week. Yeah, very much. I think Scotland can take a lot, and there's a lot of still to go in this game as well. And great to see Lana up and, and, and walking off, getting all the care that she needs. But yeah, mend well, Lana, mend well. But yeah, next next week against France, it's a huge opportunity for Scotland. Hopefully, it'll be a record crowd at the Hive. It's been some fantastic experience. There was 2,000 for the Glasgow Edinburgh game at the end of December. It's such a home for Scotland. And uh, following that, again, back-to-back -back home matches, England in the two weeks after. So, huge opportunity for Scotland there. Well, Lana Skeldon's departure means that Ellis Martin is coming on, the 24-year-old who plays her rugby for Leicester Tigers, along with so many of this wider Scottish squad. There's also a change for Scotland. Alicia Butchers is leaving us, so coming on at blindside is Kate Williams, someone that you'll be very familiar with, Shuan. Born in New Zealand, but made the move over here pretty much to become a full-time professional rugby player and play her Test Match Rugby for Wales. Yeah, she's a great girl, Kate is. You know, we met, uh, she came over here the summer before Rugby World Cup 22 and trained with the squad and then actually got brought into our squad um, out in New Zealand when unfortunately Lisa Butchers had, had that injury. And um, so Kate was in familiar and in and around that environment and then transitioned and moved over to Wales after that, that campaign and has been in and around this squad for the last 12 months and um, is performing week in, week out, you know, and she's played Celtic Challenge game and is, is signed for Gloucester and then due to her performances in Celtic Challenge were then was then involved in the Gloucester side so she's had lots of game time under her belt over the last few months and is, is performing on a regular basis so I'm sure she'll be looking to put an impact on this Welsh side now bet you anything in 20 minutes time that hair won't be looking so immaculate Scotland swift ball away from the base of the scrum and Lisa Thompson carrying a few red jerseys with her. A long busting carry from the inside centre. Smith, the latest to have a carry, and now Gallagher, who's been pulling up trees for Bristol Bears all season long. Pulled up trees in the last Six Nations, in fact, played every minute. Emma Orr knocks it on, but we were playing for an advantage. Just Joyce offside. Yeah, just there, Emma. Just like yeah, we were playing penalty advantage, but she'll just be annoyed with herself there. Scotland had five handling errors in the first half. With that's just two more in, in, in this half. But yeah, just another opportunity here for Scotland. And that was a good scrum. Ellis Martin, good scrummager, should come on at hooker, um, and uh, that was good scrum to play off. Yep. Find this really interesting, guys going for corner again so obviously their confidence is back up but it's a four point game not far from the, from the post you know it is three points makes it a seven Wales point game way. Wales have got to score and convert so you know I, it's an interesting decision here yeah? alright Ellis Martin how is your nerve it's perfect Bonner oh. extends those go go gadget arms down it comes and on they creep They've seen the might of Wales up the other end. Can Scotland respond in kind? 
Well, they've got an advantage to play with. Gallagher opts for the direct route. Massinson on to Thompson with a little split set and back down the short side she heads. Back! Queuing up. Desperate to get their hands on the ball and it's a cute little interplay. Malcolm potting it back in field to Wassel. Wales, though. Found themselves on the wrong side of the referee. Yeah, great turnover from Cecilia to Pilato there. But side entry at the mall from the line out. Kira Bevan, I think the message come in from there you are, Sarah Cox on the touchline. That side entry at the mall from Will Scrum off Kira Bevan. Runa Lloyd was absolutely waving away there, way out the right wing. She was the only one in the second half of, of the pitch there. So uh, let's see what happens from this line out. Well, the line out stats are a sorry tale for the Scots, but they've got another advantage here. Massinson to Thompson, popping up so much at first receiver. Nelson now out to Smith. Has to deal with Heskith. Oh, the offload is gorgeous and finds Grant. Stopped in her tracks, melted by a double shot from a pair of Welsh defenders. Scotland three metres shy. Now Malcolm. Maura! Just goes and goes and goes. Relentless operator for Brian Eason's side. Wassell. Now Massinson. On to Nelson. Massinson again, a rock ball for Scotland, has been electric in this second half. Bonner, plenty of her mates in and over it, securing that ball. Massinson walks in the background, she's leaving this to the bruisers up front. Red, red. Looking to beat Wales into I'm submission blind, here. Blind. The latest pick and go comes in, patient, repeated, pounding efforts. The phases racking up, the pressure hands, intensifies hands, this hands to put Scotland up above the 20 point mark to extend their lead further in a hunt for history. But Wales say no. Yeah, well worked defence there by Wales. Really good stuff, but earlier infringement again at the line out. Different infringement to the, to the line out before. Abby Fleming went up and competed, but I believe a, a lifter threw her across the line out. Thank you. Yeah, the ref was just saying discipline's really important here now for Wales. Bit of a warning there to Hannah Jones for her girls. Yeah, it's mating up in this 22. Good comms though from, from Rachel Mark and keeping in touch with the referee. And Scotland just building the pace, just building the pace, just staying patient. But again, don't get into a dog fight, so don't over egg the, the going round because Wales great great held off it hadn't been advantage there. So Karis Phillips and Donna Rose are on joining us two of London's. Most physical and abrasive one, Harlequin one, Saracen. And Scotland opting to take the line out yet again here, just shy of 6,000 gathered here at a twilight arms park. They'd love to see the Scots thwarted oh! again, but they're on the hunt for a third score. They've been made to wait for it. Wales's defense has been resilient. Yes! Mattinson told to use it. Thompson is there again. Omnipresent in the midfield and now Scotland set themselves up. Look at all those bodies flocking round to the open side of oh, that breakdown there. Here is Martin, the Tiger. Massenson finding Wassel. Back doing what she does best, putting in shot after shot. Her eighth carry of the afternoon. Five metres the difference. 
surely eventually the dam will burst how much more of this can Wales withstand defensively Wassel wants it but instead it's Martin who carries now Massenson on to Bonner with Bartlett in support cries of Wales ringing out around the arms clock And there's a player staying down for Scotland. They're playing with 14. Smith switches it. Pops it up and finds Lloyd. No! Yeah. But it's... No, no, please. Again and again comes Scotland. Four points Scotland, in it. No! Just over 10 minutes remaining of this fixture. We had a feeling this was going to be close. Smith. And now this is Gallagher still going, bouncing off a pinball in Welsh traffic. Mattinson up. And on again. Smith's going to have to root for it. No, it's Mattinson instead who does the honours. Gallagher. Player still down on the pitch for Scotland. It's Sarah Bonner. She looks really uncomfortable. We'll have to call a halt to proceedings. Heather Lockhart. What do you make of that? Well, I think Sorry, it's some outstanding Welsh defence. When, when it's a, a, an organised defence, Wales are really in their element. They really play well together. They get those turnovers. But Scotland are patient. They're, they're trying to get that out in the, in the right wing. But just, yeah, just to speed it up. But I hope Sarah Bonner's OK. But, yeah, some outstanding Welsh defence. But uh, Scotland being patient, maybe at the penalty, instead of going to line it, maybe do a scrum. That would be my only thought. But, um, yeah, some great attacking play and great defensive play. Yeah, Will's done very well there to hold the Scottish team out, and they look comfortable in, in defence. Like you said, connected, no route through there for, for this Scotland, determined Scotland side, so did really, really well to, to contain them then, and uh, the play just swung back to where, where Bono was unfortunately down. It was really hard, obviously, for Wills to manage that defence there, so the right call came in from the AR to, to hold it there because it was fear it was going to go down that channel, but also really hard from a defensive point of view. Amazing, 126 tackles yes. each. Outstanding from both sides. Only four missed by Scotland. So another opportunity in attacking, and best wishes to Sarah Bonner. She's had so many issues recently with collarbones and shoulders. And this is how it came about. Yeah, I think that's some shoulder, isn't it, unfortunately? Both of them dipped at the same time. Kate Williams and Bonner dip in to carry into that contact. Looks a little bit uncomfortable there, but hopefully it's nothing too serious and hopefully we see her back on the field at some point this campaign. And it was Lou McMillan who deputised so ably for her last year when she was unavailable for this championship. So she's on now, wearing 19, the Saracen, the social set responsible for all the coffee clubs and the quizzes and the trips that the Scottish team get up to on their days off. They're terrible coffee snobs by all accounts. I was just going to say, how much coffee do you think is drunk <laughs> amongst these squads, especially when they're travelling back around uh, the Six Nations teams, there's a lot of coffee consumed. She used to do uh, social media posts uh, for Hill Head Jordan Hill if it was someone's birthday. She took it so seriously. Like, that was like, she goes, who's going to do it when I'm away? Her so, social well side role. Yeah. <laughs> it's an important role, right? Team morale, that cohesion. The outstanding player for Scotland. Last year played in all nine games uh, in her own right. And she also played a couple of games for Glasgow this year. Came and played in the Celtic Challenge. Scored the first try ever for, for Glasgow Warriors. Played sevens too. She's Grant! done it all, Lou McMillan. And available for all of your Photoshop needs. Bye! Set! Massenson will feed the scrum. It's much altered now. So many of the replacements on, looking to bring what they can in what is a seriously tight tussle here in Cardiff. Emma Orr and Rona Lloyd, plenty of pace on that kick chase. And it's Lloyd. He tucks this under one arm and finds herself stranded on the halfway line. Sorry, sorry. The call comes in from Sarah Cox. Gone, sorry. There has been a knock-on, so we'll have another scrum. 
with 10 minutes remaining. Here's the tail of the tape. Look at the metre difference. Scotland have turned last year's physicality deficit on its head. Yeah, it's, it, it's always there, that the, the back three especially, and so with that centre partnership with uh, Orr and Thompson d providing the service, and Helen Nelson really on form today, both of their passing and her kicking. Yeah, those metres made, isn't it? You've, you've got a dangerous back three here. You know, the, the Grant has been outstanding. We spoke about her first half. But when you get that ball in those wide channels, the metres made is, is phenomenal. And that's probably been the difference in this game. Both sides, push us straight. Not winning, not standing on the side. Thanks. There's a lot of pressure on this Welsh side the last 15 minutes. Since Wales scored that try from Cecilia, they've been parked down in their 22 or in their Close. half at least. It's been all Scotland. But Scotland not managed to convert Five. that pressure into points again. Wales defence looking comfortable, Seven. but I'm sure they don't want to be in this position, this Welsh squad. Huge penalty to the Scots. I wonder if they'll just be allowing themselves to dream of a first victory on Welsh soil. They've lost 14 of the 16 encounters in this head-to-head -head in the Six Nations. And Heather Lockhart, 89 times Scotland international to my right, is gesturing furiously towards the uprights. They're just about to do it. Yeah, I think just like they've tried all the various other options and I can understand what they're trying to do. The last six wins, they've won by bonus point wins, all of them, all the, the last six matches. But I think here, given the circumstances we talked about at the beginning, kicking would be key and decide the match. And I think that's the right option. Yeah, absolutely. You've got to go out and win the game first, haven't you? And everything else is a bonus. I was wondering when this moment was going to come and they were going to go for, for the points. You know, that seven points is, makes a huge difference to four. Well, that win against Italy last year was Rachel Malcolm's first ever Six Nations win as captain after 11 previous attempts. So you can only imagine how much she's enjoying all the cheering and all the cooling down that this run of six has entailed. with ice in her veins and a compass in her boots makes it a seven point game with six minutes remaining here in Cardiff just struck that one superbly there's real rhythm today real rhythm Kira Bevan leaves the field, so what a moment for the young teenager, Sean Jones, making her debut after sparkling in Gwalior Lightning colours in the Celtic Challenge. They couldn't not call her up. Yeah, she's definitely a promising player. Fortunate to coach her on the pathway last year. Her Wales 18s and 20s, she's only actually come out of 18s, but played up to 20s last summer and is an exceptional talent. And in the battle of the fullbacks today, it's been Meryl Smith who's had the edge, perhaps it's fair to say, over debutant Jenny Hesketh, just showing all of that guile that she's gained in the Test Match arena. That's yeah. a great word, guile. Guile, I know, I'm learning lots today. <laughs> well, I'm learning lots about rugby, so let's call it <laughs> evens. Yes, yeah, it's, it's an interesting battle, actually, isn't it? Jenny Hesketh versus Meryl Smith, both Bristol players um, playing international honours opposite each other, same position this afternoon. Turn over. No heads. Wales knowing that time is of the essence here. Fizz it out through the hands of George and Lake and then it's popped on to Hasketh. The debutant and Helen Nelson, who has been exemplary off the tee and furious in defence, thunders up and slams the fullback down. Jones onto George, and now Fleming looking for something, but finding only a knock on Scotland will have the put in. Referee's hand had come out, but the penalty now going the way of Wales. 
another chance here isn't there five minutes left penalty for Wales Thank you, George we look into put this Welsh side deep into the 22 give them an opportunity to get back into this game to either draw this game or give them another shot to have another play a really important part of the game here for this Welsh squad Change now for Scotland. Merrill Smith, who has had a day to remember, heads from the field. Chloe Rolly is on wearing 23. I and mean, what can we say about Chloe Rolly? The dump truck driver turned sorceress every minute of last year's campaign. Team of the championship. What an athlete to be able to draw upon with four minutes remaining and history beckoning in Cardiff. It's Wales's ball to play with now. They know how essential these next few moments are. Scotland stray offside. And Wales now up into the 22, being bayed on by the 6,000 gathered here in Cardiff. Chip through has to be gathered, is gathered, will come back for the advantage. Yeah, good option again there by. Thank you, George. No new penalty advantage was coming their way. Looks for the little grubber through. But played the nine. One of the Scottish players, I didn't know who it was, but played Sean Jones. So that right, you can't do that. That's illegal. So a Wales penalty here. Yeah, Wales are exactly where they want to be. They talked how dangerous they are in the 22, and they're exactly where they want to be. Yeah, and in an interesting spot, pretty much in the middle of the park. Be interesting to see what they do here, you know. If I was on the field, I'd potentially be looking at a scrum. Split the split the split the defense. Got a decision to make. Tying the forwards to that pack. Lots of space to exploit. With your wingers out there with Jazz Joyce. Speaking of decisions to make, I ask you to get your thinking caps on and have a ponder about who your player of the match might be. And Sean, I'm going to come to you because I think you're going to deliver this with particular relish. <laughs> it, it could have been one of many players today, but, you know, I, I said in the first half, really, Grant, for me, has been absolutely exceptional. The way she's, you know, the youngster's taken that wing and the way she's imposed herself on the game, but taking her opportunities when she's had ball in hand has been outstanding. I was really impressed with her at the start of this game. 132 metres made. That's a phenomenal start, stat. And she definitely put the Scotland team on front foot first half. Well, could this be the moment? It's as loud as it's been all afternoon. And look at Wales roaring towards the whitewash. Scotland, with a last-ditch shove, managed to just eke a little bit of momentum out of them, but the ball stays with the hosts knowing they have three minutes to make up seven enormous points. The try line beckons and Cardiff is on its feet. George, the crossfield kick, it's absolutely on the money, but Rolly has Joyce in her grasp and will come back for the penalty. Oh, it's a grandstand finish, all right. Absolutely outstanding drive there and kick, but yeah. I'd be interested to see the referee's call here. It's deliberate seven. there for me. The seven coming in the Undecided. side, stopping that driving more. Yeah. Seven. I would say this needs to be more than a penalty. Seven. More advancing clear the other side. Scotland. Were blemish free last year, not a single card over the course of the championship. But it's the debutant, the teenager Alex Stewart, who leaves the field and will not be re entering the fray because this has become exactly that. It is fever pitch. Wales will have the darts five meters out. Safely down by Lewis, on they march. 
but it's sacked again by Scotland illegally. Side entry, out goes the hand. Wales have the advantage to play with. This could prove enormously costly for Scotland, who are a fingertip away from history. On they drive, look at the power, look at the desire from Johan Cunningham's women. I didn't quite see what happened there. But Evie Gallagher has the ball in her hand. I'm not sure what happened. But, you know, Scotland are killing the clock here. Vital, vital moment in the game. be interesting to see what the conversation is. When Flea was on the ground, she never used the legs or the knees to move forward and just put her arm to score a try. So for me, I got the ground in. We have to check. Do we have something else? Well, we'll be heading to our television match official, Leo Colgan, for the first time this afternoon. This game has been played at a breakneck pace. We've hardly needed his services, but now up we go. And in the most dramatic of circumstances. For me, it's uh, also decision is try, because the red player is on the ground, but never uses her legs to move forward, just raise her arm, yeah, to score a try. For, so, uh, for us, strong on the decision is a grounding, but to check if there is a clear or double moment. Okay, Clara, stand by. Your on field decision is try. Yeah. Check in for double movement. Yeah, thank you. Okay. I'll show sure another cap face is so close to the screen before us and her eyes are going square. What do you see, Shua? Yeah, I couldn't see what happened originally from up here, but I'm looking at, at this real play and uh, for me, it looks like Alcal knows exactly where the line is. Is there a double movement? I think, is it a one movement? Clara, yeah. stick with your on-field decision. You are not award the try. OK, try it for Die on Alcal. Well done, Alcal. She knew exactly where that line was. And Wales prize themselves off the ropes, down on the canvas. They rally to strike back with the conversion to come, the conversion to lock things up in Cardiff. And Cardiff Arms Park go wild, dear Claire. The crowd have really got behind this Welsh squad now and are pleased with that score. Big kick from Shaky George. She's nailed many of these. But there's be time on the clock as well for one more play. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. Clakey George has the ball on a string, a ball in hand, but she sometimes struggles with her place kicking. 64% off the tee in the Premiership this season. This to draw us level. The flags stay down, the kick drifts wide, and the face of Clayshie George says it all. Scotland need to survive 30 fever pitch seconds if they are to secure a famous, famous victory. Absolutely, they'll just be giving Evan there. Malcolm's chatting with the referee just for patience. They have won in the, in the Five Nations in 2004. It's not won here in 20 years. Well, the kickoff's long. Of course it is, and it bounces up and into the hands of George, who shapes to kick it, but realised that that would be madness because the clock is red. But as things stand, the result is blue. Wales will need to play their way from their own 22. And Jones opts to kick it. And Scotland have defeated their great Celtic rivals on Welsh soil for the very first time. Cardiff is conquered 
and these Thistles Crusaders have extended their winning run to seven matches. Rachel Malcolm knows what this means. What a start to her campaign. A side who this time last year were desperate to find some form. Look what it means. They have found some form now, all right. Scotland overwhelmed and Wales huddled, looking shell-shocked. They will need to regroup because the Red Roses are up next while Scotland march on, march home to host Les Bleus. It finishes in Cardiff. Wales 18, Scotland 20. Absolutely outstanding. I think Emma Orr there just can't quite, just her emotions, just like she just played so well today, just set up so many of the, the good passages of play and also just absolutely a fantastic, outstanding team effort. It's a record seven wins on the bounce and a record three wins in a row as well, matching what they did in 2005. They've not done that for 2005. So real momentum, real consistency and real desire and belief and digging it out just exactly all the way to the end. Sometimes those what the, the previous 12 matches uh, before that they lost in a row things weren't going their way and now things are going their way and they're going to take that to France next week they have lost 12 straight test matches before getting that victory over Italy last season they've won seven in a row irrefutable proof that if you make it so winning is a habit yeah, I think as well, the tangible, they won a trophy um, at the WXV2, the champions winning all three matches, um, just narrowly nudging out um, Italy on points difference. And I think to have a tro trophy and a new competition, well done World Rugby for having that new competition. Three levels, 18 teams all playing globally in a, such an important competition, which will be a, a pathway to the, the RWC World Cup next, uh, next year. But a moment for Scotland to really take stock. All the coaching team, the support staff, we talked about the psychology, that all the others ho ho um, help along the way. Matt Banham will be de particularly delighted. New coach coming in, scoring these great tries. Hell Nelson, well done on the kicking. Well done to all 23 of them. A full whole squad effort. And look at what it means to head coach Brian Easton. He has orchestrated something truly historic tonight in Cardiff. Corin Grant, Rachel Malcolm have conquered the Welsh capital. Well, my goodness, we predicted a tight match here at Cardiff Arms Park, but I don't think we quite expected the grandstand finish that we had. This, of course, was the second match of the day. Earlier on today, we had France taking on Ireland. We might not have thought that that one be, would be quite as close as it was. France coming out victorious with a bonus point win. Five tries for them, 38-17. And, of course, England take on Italy tomorrow, and you can see that one on the BBC. But, wow, what an ending we have had to this match. Uh, Scotland looked as in control as, as they possibly could with the mistakes that they made. Um, but that finish, Wales fought till the very, very end. Heartbreak in the end. Yeah, it is heartbreak, but, you know, Wales have been on the other end of the foot as well, you know, with, with Kira Bevan's kick and these 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 moments at the 80th minute, you know, 79th minute, and we always said from the top that this game was going to be really close, and I think it is a real uh, showcase of sport today, you know, to see how those two teams... It's, it's fascinating, isn't it, if you think about where it was for the WXV, yeah. you know, Wales going in there, having some heavy defeats, heard it in comms, you know, what then effect does that have on a team? The flip side of that is Scotland. It's now seven wins in a row. Um, which is incredible. So, you know, I think it just shows that, that belief that the Scotland, Scottish team has got. But, yeah, look, there's loads of, there's loads of um, learnings in there for Wales, and I don't think they need to be too disappointed. They'll, they'll root a few of the missed opportunities for sure. Um, but, look, we had a great game of rugby, and, that, and that's what we want to see. We'll get into the, uh, the thick of it in a minute. I mean, Scotland might rue miss at not taking the points, not going for the points. We'll concentrate on that a little bit later on. But they came out victorious. I mean, Scotland haven't actually... Um, you know, they've only, they've only won away from home on one occasion in the last 15 years. Yeah, so that's, it's been a long time coming and it's actually been 20 years since they've beaten Card um, Wales away. Um, so, you know, a, a massive achievement for them and the monkey's off the bat now, so hopefully they can relax a little bit uh, and take this winning momentum into the rest of the games in Six Nations. 
and Tran, um, your point of view, I mean, it's difficult when you're in commentary, you're invested in this as well. Try and describe the emotions of what's happening out there. Yeah, it was a battle, wasn't it? We knew from the start our, our, our talk was all around it was going to be a tight game and how tight these games have been over the last few years. And again, it's a two-point game and it could have gone either way at the end. It could have been a draw. And it was an outstanding match. It was an outstanding way for day one of this of this Six Nations. And the important thing is now is how this Welsh team dust themselves off and learn their lessons from today and how they um, conduct themselves to go into a, another important game next week, you know? What both teams need to remember is they've come a long, long way over the last few years and the quality of rugby now they're demonstrating week in, week out is, is, is exceptional and um, I'm looking forward to seeing how both these teams progress through the championship. And that's a really important thing and I, we said right at the very beginning the fact that WXV, the fact that there are contracted players in both Wales and Scotland, we don't have, hopefully, just two teams dominating this championship. Maybe it might happen for the next couple of years, but not going forward in, in the bigger picture. And that, that, that is key, isn't it? That gap keeps narrowing. You know, 30 minutes uh, last year when Wales played England, you're at Cardiff House Park, 30 minutes they were in that game for. How do we get into that game for 50, 60 minutes and that gap keep narrowing? And the same for Scotland when they go and play France next week. How do, how do they put in a good account of themselves? Like Ireland scoreline today, like you mentioned, did we expect to see that scoreline? Maybe not based on their championship last year. But that, to me, shows a huge amount of growth in that island team, and that's narrowed that gap with France this year. So that's what's exciting about this women's championship now. You're right, and I think um, you touched on it there. Scotland and Wales, they need to build that 80-minute consistent performance to get up there to compete with those better teams. And they are starting to put that together now. You see Wales playing the WXV1. They're playing against... So they, they weren't getting the wins, but they were playing at that top level, and that will build a bit of confidence and, and a bit of experience. So... It will come, and it is coming. Let's take a look then at the try right at the very end. Alex Callender, they had to take a look at it. Um, nervous fans all around the stadium. It brought it up to 18-20. It was great play. Yeah, and, uh, you know, brave to go for the line out. You know, arguably could have gone for three points and given yourself another crack at getting another opportunity, but they went with it after missing a few opportunities earlier. And then it's just the forwards going through the work. You know, we saw it early in the set piece um, from the from the try with Cecilia, the, the, the dominance they can get in these short, to, uh, short carries. But I think it's just it's just presence of mind, probably from, from our calendar there. Just uh, She knows where the try line is, you know, and unfortunately it's just probably just the wrong side of the post for Clakey, but... Look, she, she slots those every weekend, um, you know, all day long for Gloucester Heart Ray, and she, she'll kick herself for that one, but she can't put, you know, she can't have that on herself. Like, it's not, it's nothing to do with that. It's uh, it's just an unfortunate end. It's not her fault, is it? Do you know what I mean? It's a bonus if she gets that over. But actually, I felt like the crowd thought that that kick had gone over. They celebrated that kick, you know, so. But, but they could have kept themselves live for a little bit longer, but the box kicked off, off the pitch at the end. Yeah, I expect that's an error and probably just a lack of uh, experience there in terms of comms as well that, that's going into the nine. I think it's difficult, isn't it? You know, it's, it's still good that we picked up a losing bonus point for being within seven points. And it's those small margins that will be really tight in this championship. I think, yeah, you know, obviously there was probably a few decisions throughout the game, whether to go for points, whether to go for line. And, and we, we discussed it as a group, didn't we, and said, it, you know, it could come down to those points. And it has today. And, uh, you know, those are the biggest lessons they got to take from this, uh, I think. There are probably some concerns over what, what you know, what Wales' game plan is. Uh, it was really evident here that this wind is very, very strong, and they had it in the second half. And, and how much did they utilise it? So there'll be bits they want to dig apart and you know digest in this game, and hopefully take some lessons. They've got a really tough game next week, and it'll be about bouncing back. Yeah, the wind is obviously pretty strong out here. Uh, Brian Eason, a very happy Brian Eason, is with Jenny. Ryan, huge congratulations. You've been through a lot with this team, this squad, and you've just come out with an historic victory. Um, how on earth are your nerves? Not good. Not good. No, just it is a historic victory and so much deserved. Like, genuinely, we felt first half we probably didn't take the chances that we had. Uh, we had a few chances in the goal zone, probably didn't take it. When the run went individually sometimes, but turned over. The second half, you know, after we spoke at half time, just around, we were comfortable, but we had more in us. We had to squeeze more out of ourselves, and we did. Um, and they deserved that victory today. But 
there was a lot to manage in that game. We always know it's a tight affair. The way that they managed it in the second half, the kicking game from Helen Nelson as well. What did you make of all of that? I thought Katie Matheson and Helen Nelson just you know put us in the right areas, and when we were in the right areas, it was very made it very difficult for Wales to get out. I thought we made some really good decisions just to put the pressure back on them. And although you maybe didn't see on TV, but the wind is really strong and because of that we had to manage that in the second half I thought they managed it particularly well some brilliant defensive sets as well and you know I, we genuinely deserved that win and seven wins in a row for this group is just you know, it's phenomenal I don't think it's ever been done before with Scotland women and you know this group are a, a special group and we've had some tough times but we knew there was something coming we knew there was something special with this group and you know we'll just keep working there's a lot to work on for following this but you know we'll take it in the next game and we'll just keep growing well, it's a perfect start to this year's Six Nations campaign. Congratulations. Enjoy this one. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Big cheer at the end there. And he said how much uh, that the focus was at half-time on coming out a strong start, getting it right. And that's exactly what happened with Rona Lloyd's try. Emma Orr really starting things off. Yeah, we spoke about Emma at the beginning, didn't we? Yeah. She really stepped up. And I think they, they put some phases together a bit better in the second half as well. So we can see this one came from a turnover. Evie Gallagher um, rips it out there. Um, and you can see the transition there from defence to attack. Everyone getting set and ready. Um, and we can see Cecilia Tupelotu is uh, out of position because she was in a, an attacking position. Emma Orr does really well to get around to those defenders, fixes the last one and just puts Rona Lloyd into space, who does well at the end to finish it off. But Emma Orr, just, yeah, great vision to see that, to, to fix those defenders and, and put Rona into that space to score the try. Yeah, it was getting a little bit sevens on sevens at the end, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, but it's great vision, wasn't it? To spot who's in front of her and get on the outside. OK, where there's a happy captain and a happy coach, there's going to be a disappointed one. Let's hear from Hannah Jones. Hannah, huge commiserations. It's, it's never easy to lose in the opening match for campaign and at home. Can you just sum up how tough that was out there tonight? Yeah, Scotland definitely brought it to us. Um, to the girls, you know, they showed great character towards the end there, but we just left it a little bit too much to do towards the end. Do you think it was the first half that cost you in particular? It'll be inter interesting to see how many times we went into their opposition because we needed to come away with points, so that'll be interesting to see how many times we went in and, you know, didn't come away with points. Defensively, you had to work so hard and, and you were so close to, you know, at least a draw at the end there. Are you proud of the girls, the effort they put in? Yeah, the character and the work rate, you know, is outstanding, you know, but we've got to be more accurate um, in everything we do and come away with points at the end of the day. Coming into this, did you feel ready? Did you feel prepared? For the level that you wanted to deliver? Yeah, definitely, you know, we, we got confidence in going into the next game now, we've got to reveal, we've got to park this loss and carry on. So what have you got to do better next week? Like I said, accuracies and come away with points. Thanks very much for your time, hard lines. Thank you. Well, delighted to uh, have Helen Nelson joining us. My goodness, what a win. Only the second in 15 years away from home for Scotland, but what an end to this match. I mean, you lot must have nerves of steel with that finish. Yeah, we knew it was going to be a tight game, but I think you always hope that it's not going to be that close and it's not going to come down to the to the final play. But um, we talked about it a lot at half time, just keeping that composure, keeping cool heads, and um, just sticking to, to our strategy and our, our game plan. Uh, we heard from Brian saying about like, a big push at half time. Because you knew this was going to be tight. It's tight every year, isn't it? Yeah, and I think we were really happy with our first 20 minutes, but then also probably we're aware that we took our foot off the gas that second 20 of the first half. So just get back to basics, get ourselves on the front foot, and hopefully, like, hoping the wind kind of calmed down yeah. a wee bit because it was <laughs> strong. But, um, yeah, just really proud of the girls. I think we, we got on the front foot that second half and took our chances. Nelly, uh, you really exploited the edge here today. I thought your wingers looked really dangerous, especially Grant. Was that something you identified in training this week that you could exploit the edge, or do you just have confidence out there? Yeah, I think we, when you've got a secret weapon like Emma Orr, who can square up and give balls out in front like that, I think we just know we get the ball in her hands and then she can put people away, and I think she did that today. She was absolutely outstanding. And then you've got the pace of Corrine and Rona as well. Um, it's absolutely it's a, it's a strength of ours. It's a great game. What learnings will, will you all take away from this? Because we saw Scotland getting into the 22 and not actually taking the points. You might get away with it here, all due respect. You're not going to get away with that next week against France. Definitely. I think all credit to Wales. Um, it definitely felt like we were attacking against a brick wall at times in the 22. So I think we probably need to be a little bit more clinical there, like you say, against the likes of France. 
Um, so we'll definitely look at that, try and tighten things up and, and be a bit, a bit more clinical in that area. Any concern with the two injuries as well uh, in the second half because these are big match players? Yeah, I mean, Lana was smiling away there afterwards, so hopefully she's OK, but um, hopefully yeah, get the medics to look at them and yeah. get them right for the next few weeks. Fingers crossed. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Thank it's you. cold and windy out here, so go and get warm. Cheers. We've got a little bit more work to do. Thank you very much. Thanks, there is plenty more Six Nations action coming up for you on the BBC. So that is all to come. What will be the learnings for Wales after this one, Sean? I think discipline in the first half. I think, you know, they had the stats through the roof in the first half, but, um, you know, keeping possession and territory and, and being able to capitalise on those opportunities. You know, defence really, that first half on the edge looked really vulnerable, which cost them. But it's all lessons, isn't it? And what excites me is it's a, it's a bit of a new looking squad. It's got some youngsters coming through there. We've seen Sean Jones come off the bench. Um, and there's three campaigns until the Rugby World Cup where these youngsters get opportunities and, 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 and you blood them, you know. So, you know, the squad will be disappointed today, but there's lots more to come. And uh, just very quickly, uh, Scotland will leave here so buoyant. Big confidence boost this. Yeah, massive. They know they've got some big tests ahead. They've got France at home, then they've got England. Big games. But they'll be looking, as we spoke about, that consistent performance. They'll be looking to build on that. Not necessarily the win. If they look after the performance, the result will take care of itself. Ladies, thank you very much for your company. You are allowed to go and get warm, get out of the wind. Look at these happy faces. There is much more action for you tomorrow because do not forget that England are over in Italy. You can join Sonia, Maggie Alfonso and Katie daly McLean. But tonight from Cardiff, thank you very much for watching. Scotland leave here victorious. Plenty more to come. Bye-bye. The 2024 Women's Six Nations is upon us with all the flames and the fury. They have carried their scintillating form all the way to Cardiff. History told us that this one would be poised on a knife edge. Lloyd against Joyce.